All right. Welcome back, everyone, to the philosophy of art and science. As always, if you want to support these programs, head over to patreon.com slash Aksum, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash A-K-S-U-M. You could also join the YouTube channel directly, $1, $5, $25 a month. Do what you can do. Today, our special guest is Benny Hunnitz and Dethana. What it do? Thank you, my brother. It's uh, it's very uh, it's very good, and I say long overdue to have you on the mm. program. I think there's so many things, and we were <laughs> even our pre-roll, we were getting into things. Yeah. This this happens with some guests, not with all guests, but it happens sometimes. Your pre-roll yeah. is content worthy too. But um, right. I think a, an interesting kind of combo we we dipped our feet into that we could share with the people is uh, Shakespeare's got this beautiful line, uh, what's in a name, a rose by any other would smell just as sweet. You got this uh, this brand name that you've been using uh, for for a long time. Right. And we talked a little bit about it. Uh, yeah. How did you how did you originally get to be called? Benny Hunnins. Did somebody give you that title? Did you did you come up with it? Yeah. You know, it was so funny. Um yeah, somebody called me that one day. I just had like a a, a knack for, you know, making money. You know, getting you know, uh being prosperous. So one day a dude <laughs> just called me. I swear. So so there's it's actually a chain. So like I, I play football, right? So I'm from Texas, triple D Dallas, Texas, right? So I played football, and then we actually had a super, like, country coach. And he would butcher my name, uh, my first name, which is Bayena, right? And um, and he did so at a time when I was actually super protective of my name. Like, my name was getting butchered my whole life, but by the time I got to high school, it was very – I was very, like, protective over it. Like, just – so, like, something came over me in that time to where I told everybody, you either call me B, right? Oh, you call me by my last name, Mystica. So they call me Mystica, right? Um, so they can say Mystica. It's when you throw in the Y's and the E and E's, really? and they get they confused. can't roll the R though, right? They could, I guess, yeah. if you said it like they're not, they, <laughs> you had to super emphasize it for them. They'd have to speak a bit like Spanish. But Mystica is like it's enough. Like it's better than you know, Bayena. When you think Bayena, it's not that hard. But yeah, no, right? Um, but phonetically b-e-y-e-n-e if you think about it as an american it's like you gotta think vowel consonant e it changes uh how you read would read that and then a y in the middle of a word always fucks people up you know what i'm saying yeah. so it's just like yeah it was it was interesting so anyway by when i was in high school people just call me b or people call me most people just call me b but like coaches and stuff uh administrators they call me by my last name um and but my this old ass coach, mind you, his name was Gary Childress, you know what I'm saying? He was old then, so God God bless him. So I hope he's still like I I don't even know like he's still with us, God bless him. I hope he is. I just don't know. <laughs> I haven't Amen. heard about Coach Childress, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but um my point is is he was actually a Hall of Fame coach. He was our athletic director that came down to be the coach. And in Texas he was like the third highest paid coach because he was he was above coaching at that point. So long story short, I ain't finna tell this nigga shit. All right. So when he started, he he fucked up my name, right? And he, he said it in a way that my homie, who ended up calling me Benny Hundreds one day, heard as Benny. Never, but nobody ever called me Benny. Think about this: how how mm-hmm. simple Benny is. Like how everybody knows me as Benny now. I would never once was called Benny all throughout grade school. You feel me? Yeah, I straight it up thought your name was I, Binyam because of it. Right, yeah, but nah, anybody, and that's, again, it's how I know who knows me from where. Anybody from Dallas knows me as Bayena, you feel what I'm saying? Um, but, uh, I mean, people still call me Benny, but they, I'm saying, like, that's not abnormal. That's not, you know what I'm saying? That's what they would know me as, you feel me? Mm-hmm. Or God, like I told you earlier, but we'll get on that later, right? Um, but, yeah, so he said something to sound like Benny. Apparently the homie picked it up and he told me. I asked him like, "Why do you call me Benny?" He's like nobody calls me Benny. Where'd you get that from? And he even spells it differently than I did. He he texted to me one time, B E N I. I'm like, <laughs> "Where'd you get this from?" You feel what I'm saying? And then he was like, "Coach Childress." It was like one day I just asked him, I was like, "Where'd you get this from?" He's like, "Coach Childress." 
I was like, that is, this is not how he said it. He used to, like, when I say butcher my name, bro, he used to butcher my name. So it wasn't Benny. I would have wished, I, I wished for Benny, you know what I'm saying, when he would call me. Like, I wish he would just say my, like, most of the time he'd say my last name, but when he would try my first name, it was always, it was always dreadful. Um, so, I mean, at one point I told him, you know, just call me Mr. Good Man, because you, like, you killing me, dog. Like, you know, yeah. I wasn't even going to try to correct you, teach you my name, just... Just call me Mystical Man, just like the rest of these dudes, you know what I'm saying? Call him by my last name, you know. Um, but yeah, and then he just called me Benny Hundreds one day. Bro, when I tell you it stuck, like, I got every domain, I, I mean, every website, I bought the domain, everything. Um, I'm, it's funny because a few years ago, in a lapse of just life, I let the domain slip. And I'm pretty sure you got this on record. You, from, you, you live in LA, yep. right? You from LA. Yeah, both. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the hundreds took my shit because I get tagged in a lot of their shit. And I even put up to their store one time and I was like, yo, like, you know, one of these days, man, I'm I'm gonna become somebody, y'all can sponsor me, you feel me? Like we could we could work something out. And I was joking around. And soon after that, I had forgot about the domain and it only took long enough before as soon as it was available, that bitch was gone. I don't know if they actually took it. I'm being facetious, who knows who took it? But I wouldn't be surprised if it was them because I used to get tagged in a lot of their shit before I deleted my first Instagram. So, um, yeah, anyway, that's where it comes from, bro. Benny yeah, Hunt is like literally people who don't the know homies. that that's one of the big L.A. brands. That's like Melrose. You go down Melrose, all the big stores are there. And the hundreds is one of them. I had a boy back in middle school and high school who used to work there. Uh, I definitely mess with their stuff. You know, they have a, a cool yeah, brand. Yeah, they do. I actually fuck with their shit. It's that, and it's comfortable. It's comfortable. Um, so I actually rock with their stuff, you know. So you know, hey man, you know, y'all want to slip me my domain back? I ain't trying to sell no clothes with no cannonballs on there. <laughs> you know, all my stuff gonna be real. You know, culture, different culture. You know what I'm saying? But nah, I don't care. But I'm just been coins dot. on your stuff. You know, some. You know, it's funny. So I got this. Um, I bought this off uh, the homies brand. Uh, you probably know her. She she lives in LA now. I think uh, Betty, uh, my Musco. So I bought this house. I got that. I got the auction my joint out there. So shout out to her because I'll be buying up all her shit. I'm pretty sure there's no more Muscos there because I bought them all. You oh yeah, yeah. That's a clean cross. Yeah. yeah. Do yeah, people ask like you about it? Because when I would rock mine in middle school, I had really dumb questions. Like people were asking me if it's a swastika, and then you know sometimes I would oh, answer Lord. them in a funny way, but sometimes you know I'd spend time to like give them a real answer. You know what, like, yeah, I I haven't gotten too many questions, but honestly, I just barely got this one uh, not too long ago, because uh, I had, you probably, if you look in any picture I've taken in the last decade, bro, I had a, a, a silver, it was a crucifix, though, like, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't a musket, um, with, like, this dope lock chain, right? I had that since... I want to say 2011, maybe before, wore every day. One day, uh, like, we were playing football. It was Thanksgiving, I say one day. It was Thanksgiving, I was playing football with my little cousins. I ran into one of them. You know, it was, like, a big ordeal, you know. I was too damn old to be playing with these kids, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I'm pretty sure when we ran into each other, um, I lost the necklace because I, I eventually I came to my neck and I didn't have my necklace anymore. So I had to re-up on um, getting a – you know, daily, uh, uh, getting, you know, in some, some, I gotta walk, we gotta with me, I gotta have my own, I need my talisman, you know. Oh, I yeah. appreciate that, especially having, uh, I know you from D Town, Triple D, but I know you spent yeah. some time out in LA, so I'm glad it's not a chain snatching story because there are definitely enough of those I know from celebrities, but even nah. real, real people, like real people I know. Yeah, nah, man, nah, I don't, I don't, I'm not getting my chain snatched, bro, that'd be crazy. You know, I'm not even like, why would you, why would you snatch my chain? You know, nah. you'd be surprised, <laughs> man. <laughs> you'd be surprised. Man. Uh, you'd be surprised. You yeah. know, I, uh, my, my view on, on the hood and I'm not really from it. I'm from, I'm from the, the Valley, uh, not the nicest oh, part. Word, okay. Yeah. Not the nicest yeah. part, but not like the main hoods of LA, whether it be, yeah. uh, jungle Compton Watts. But I've definitely worked in those areas and visited those because a lot of friends, families, uh, family yeah. members, things like that. My my big rule of thumb is that 
people usually go in the opposite direction that are uh, both incorrect. The one is to overstigmatize, to think like someone's going to pull guns on you in broad daylight. Like that never mm. happens. That really never happens. Mm. But the mm -hmm. other option is to go in there and pretend like it's Disneyland and there's Disney clan cops everywhere. Like that's not the case. Where, like, don't, where, don't where are we talking about? Uh, the jungle is Crenshaw and King. Um, oh, you talking it, about you talking about LA? Okay, LA. Okay, I'm talking okay, about LA. Yeah. I'm talking about LA. That's what it's I'm funny. Talking. So I live when I lived out there. I lived uh, in Inglewood. I don't. I don't know. Relatively speaking, what's worse than what? You know what I'm saying? But uh, it was always some. Sh it was always something going down on, on our street. Like when I say always, there was one yeah. point. <laughs> I put it on my Instagram story. It was like a, a fake bomb, like literally right outside our apartment. Like they cleared us out, like all of us out of our house until like three in the morning. We out in our car down the street. They brought like bomb squad and all this shit. It's been shootings, been people dying. I'm like, man, it's it's wild, but you're right. It's not like broad daylight. It's like, no, and Inglewood's different. Yeah. I would tell you, uh, and I've had family in Inglewood from the very beginning. I feel very it's safe a lot in of Inglewood. Shot. There's a lot of hobby. Yeah, shot. I, I, I felt good, but it was like literally right across. I live off of Venison Beach. Mm -hmm. And it was right on the other side of Venice. It was just like. Since you're a hustler, I'll put you on right the game before the white people yeah. bite up all the property. Because uh, that's where the stadium is now. You know, the SoFi Stadium. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That's going to be the next little Ethiopia is Inglewood. Because there are issues like around that. the Fairfax area with uh, certain things that changed in zoning laws. And with the, the metro train and things like that. So. Uh, none of the Habashas actually own their restaurants and their other stores. And so oh, the land shit, is yeah. owned by uh, uh, other people, other demographics. Yeah. And so, yeah, so that, they will have the ability to sell and so. build huge houses. And that's that's at one point, push will come to shove and they'll have to go somewhere cheaper. And I hope so. They're going to want to turn Fairfax into houses? Yeah. Like before, uh, I, like I was hired. Uh, so I was hired to be a verbal translator at a meeting, okay. uh, with okay. involving a lot of the, the business owners and the people yeah. from the city and, and from the County. And we had a real conversation and I mean, I'm there neutrally just translating. Uh, and to be honest, a lot of them, their English was fine. They just wanted me there as like backup, you know, just cause okay, the legal well, language is tricky. You know, and they didn't want to be there. Oh yeah. They didn't want to feel flanked. No, exactly. So the yeah. thing is before you have like one or two story buildings allowed. Now you're mm. allowed to build up to eight stories and have 21 uh, residential apartment complexes. So it doesn't that's mean it. that's going to automatically happen. But if any of the owners decide to sell, any real estate investor can build that. That's like what the new yeah. limit eight is going to be. Eight stories, 21 apartments. Uh, so you you can you can do Her it however story? you want. Huh? Per story or total? Total. So I'm saying like it would be ridiculous, but if you wanted to, you could do, for example, three or whatever, you know, two and a half. I don't know. Whatever the math is, you can do per floor. You could also do three by seven. You can do, you know, two stories uh, and have 20. I mean, you could do one and have 10. Like you could do whatever arrangement you have, but you couldn't do that before. That's one of the things mm. that changed <laughs> because the purple line is being built. Which connects okay. one of the one of the many uh, metros that people don't usually take that much in, in L.A. anyway. Um, but I bring that up to say a lot of people, they might be going to to Inglewood. But I've always considered Inglewood. You know, we had uh, R.I.P. somebody in our Habesha community uh, was their life was taken just a, a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what I mean? so man, you know, that yeah, that's crazy. I, yeah, I actually. Yeah. Shout out. To, I used to I worked with the. Uh, uh, Fascio for some years, man. So I, I, I didn't even realize that was his son uh, yeah. until recently. Um, I got a text. Yeah, I actually need to reach out to him. Uh, yeah, that's a super sad story. Do it. Yeah, I know. I know the parents. Yeah. I know the sister very well. I spoke at uh, the young man's funeral. Uh, had that mm. opportunity. Uh, I shared that word on on my channel for people to see. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. People, you know. Th that's that's something that actually happened and that was outside like not far you know from a lot mm. of habasha stores restaurants you know i mean it's just to say that 
it happens, you know. So I, when mm. I walk into these areas, I'm not stupid, you know what I mean. So I take certain precautions, uh, you know. Mm. Uh, mm. So it's not that everybody's chain is getting snatched left and right, but you know, just being a little aware and conscious about where and when you're doing that. Mm -hmm. thing. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, it makes a lot of sense, bro. It makes a lot of sense. And that was another thing. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna hold you. I, I, I felt not to just dive straight into it, but I felt the devil when I was out there in LA, bro. I was like, I'm, I'm good on this shit. You feel well, me? well, let's like, hear I, that. Let's hear that because you, I think you spent some time in the the tri-state area too, from when you and I used to talk to, right? Like, what? Yeah, what, yeah. Can you yeah, tell yeah. me the difference between like different parts of America uh -huh. or, or, or you could just talk yeah, about so Dallas and LA if you don't want to talk about that. No, it's, it's, it's crazy because, I mean, I can talk about Dallas all day, but I, there's always this simple metaphor, I guess uh, it's the right phrase for it, that um, explains like the, the dichotomy uh, between or the difference between L.A. and New York. Mm -hmm. Super simple to understand. Like, yeah, I think it was my little sister who might have told me this, actually. Uh, cause she lived in New York even before I did. Um, she went to undergrad out there. So people in LA, they got, um, it's not everyone, but like the general feeling sentiment is that people have um, warm hands and colder hearts, mm. right? You're right? So it's like up front, like everybody's super friendly, super nice, whatever, but nobody actually gives a shit about you. You see mm. Whereas like in New York, it's like they got cold hands and warm hearts. So like our first glance, first touch, first whatever you may feel like it's very cold or whatever, but it's genuine fucking people. Like you go out there and ask somebody, uh, somebody told me this example the other day. I was literally just talking about this. In LA, you got somebody out there somewhere, a stranger or whatever. They might be like, oh, you know, go this way, go there and you know, you'll figure it out type shit. Like just go this way and turn right or whatever, you know, general idea. Mm -hmm. It's like people don't give you general directions help you out, but like not really be invested in it. Whereas in New York, somebody may look at you and be like, ah, "All right, come on," and like walk you to where you need to be because they know that you're, you know, you're in the jungle. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like it's just a different. Like people are just like that was like you found. I found some real ass people that like because in New York, like you gotta have tunnel vision in order to really like thrive out there. You know what I'm saying? Like. Survival in itself is actually, in order to survive, you need tunnel, uh, uh, tunnel vision. And in order to thrive, you need like like a killer instinct. You feel what I'm saying? Like the, in, in New York, really, you could kind of say both. LA is just different though. LA is like, LA is a whole lot of finesse, like knowing people. It's like, you know what I'm saying? Like that knowing people shit only gonna get you so far in New York where you gotta like, you gotta be, you gotta got something. You feel me? Whereas like in LA, you can kind of finesse and like, ex like extort, like all that extortion shit, all that, all that shit's real, bro. Like, especially in the, the, the industry is a wild place. Like, I was like, I'm good on that. And I feel like that's the only reason to live out there. It's like, what makes LA special is the proximity to like the, um, well, obviously the weather, it's not, not, that's a given, but like the proximity uh, relative to like living there, it being worth the price. The weather ain't worth the price, man. I'll fly out there, DFW airport to LA for $100, $50 a flight. You know what I'm saying? I could do that all day for some weather. You know, it's the proximity to the industry and your ability to come from nothing and be Los Angeles, right? The city of angels. That's the whole thing. Um, yeah, but if you're not doing that, I don't understand why the fuck you live in LA. You know what I'm saying? Come live in Dallas, buy some property for half the price. Well, not anymore because all y'all didn't came out here and bought everything cash. Fucked, it, fucked up the whole market. Um, <laughs> Austin but mostly. used to be. Austin mostly is what I heard. No, nah, Dallas, Austin, I heard Austin now, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Dallas, Dallas, Dallas been a rant through. Y'all are running mm -hmm. up. We up in Prosper. We up in the boonies now. <laughs> the cities, the, the the actual suburbs is done, you know? Yep. Um, I had an uncle but, who was uh, out there like five years ago. He was early with it from out yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's been a migration from Detroit. The biggest migration in America after the crash was Detroit to Dallas, uh, mm -hmm. Detroit to Texas, Michigan to Texas, right? That was the greatest migration. But also, uh, top of that, California's been coming over here for years, too. I mean, it makes sense. Like, uh, we don't slow down. Our economy don't slow down. We don't got no state taxes. Property was cheap. 
you know, it, it all made sense. But now it's like it's getting crazy because the house is just as bad, man. I might be getting up out of here, man. I might go somewhere else. You know? Man, I know people. I know exactly what you're talking drive. about. I got friends who are engineers and nurses, Habesha community. They're buying up homes out in Dallas, yeah. too. I know most of the people in Austin, but I know in Dallas, too. So I, I, Look, I know exactly I love what you're talking about. Dallas. Dallas is my city, right? At the end of the day, you know, Austin is an amazing city, right? It's very different than Dallas. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, Dallas is home, bro. Like I love, I love the people here. Um, obviously I'm born and raised here, so I love like specific people here. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I like, I genuinely know a lot of people here. And so, um, but it's very different, man. Relative to New York or LA, like if I had, like, you gotta be really be getting the bag in New York, to be honest, like the bag bag, not like, oh, like decent, like. I can make 90 some thousand here in Texas and like, bro, I'm paying off debt. I'm, I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm good. You know, you make 90,000 in New York. It's like, you make 90,000 in California. It's like, you know, <laughs> in San Francisco, all, you you're poor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're not even seeing 30, 40,000 of it because y'all eating up all that shit in taxes anyway. You feel me? Like, yeah, fuck that. I'd rather live down here, you know? I'll give you an example. My apartment's a little, you know what I'm saying? We ain't going to take the tour this time. We'll do a crib episode <laughs> the other time after I done cleaned up. But it's a little, you know, nice little open concept kitchen, open concept. I got a high table that I use as an island, big old sectional. Nice little 800 square foot, one bedroom. That's a nice long bath, you know, updated shit, key coded shit, all that. One bedroom. What would y'all? What would that be in LA? Easily nine hundred. Easily, right? Easily, it could be more depending on where exactly it is. You don't even want to know what I'm paying for this shit, big dog. <laughs> I swear you don't. Because here, 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 I'll tell you the market price. I'm paying less than market because God is my best friend, and I just happen to walk in and get a good deal the day that I bought it. But the market price on this apartment, somewhere around twelve. $1,300 because of the city that I live in and shit too. You feel me? Yeah. You go down to downtown and maybe like 14, 15, 16, right? Um, but you could get that I'm with paying, poor living in LA. That's it. Nah, no. Nah, you paying, you know, you, you living good, you know, we living good uh, paying what I'm talking about. And a lot of people, young people got roommates and shit anyway. Mm -hmm. So then it's like, it's nothing. You paying dirt to live out here. But yeah, bro, I, I pay i say it like this. You put my internet, my lights, whatever else you pay, all that shit, trash, all that. I'm probably I'm probably paying the, the, the 1300 a month, everything, all in. And I don't pay income tax. Come on, baby. Texas. I'm all no, like yeah, there's no, there's no, I, look, trust and me. Re regular unleaded got a two in front of it over here. That's a two. <laughs> <laughs> it may be a high two. It, sometimes it's two ninety nine, you know, but it's it's still a two. You it's know? definitely yeah. It's definitely a conversation that we've had in my household for a long time. I've had my eyes on Texas or Atlanta for the longest time, but you know, before really? I, those two, yeah, yeah, for real, man. I had a job offer in twenty nineteen, and at oh, the end of the well, day, yeah. I turned it down. I turned it down for what other reasons. Professional? I'm a teacher. I'm a school teacher. Oh. Oh man, teachers get paid good down here too. <laughs> I mean, relatively speaking, right? When I found out how much teachers get paid in other states, I was like, "What?" It, like, yeah, it, it a, varies. Just, it varies wildly because each state has their own regulations that that changes. That but like level. the minimum, like with the bar, like mm -hmm. you you teach in a public school in the state of Texas, there's a minimum that you make in even as a first year. And I just heard other teachers that were making less, like coming out of Teacher America and all that type mm -hmm. shit, and making like teachers in Florida is making thirty six thousand. It's just like what? And this was obviously years ago, but still, I, I don't yeah. Understand. And that's not even talking about the private schools because you're talking about public schools. But but yeah, uh, public, yeah, I'll probably go to Ethiopia before that, but we'll see. Well, I mean, we'll we'll see. Like what move? That, yeah, I mean. We we'll see we'll see how it is, but um, you know I'm not going to defend LA uh, in terms of the the things you you brought up. I was just born and raised here. I'm from here. My my deep connections are here, and uh, I don't hey man, like, like. I know hey, people. 
you know what I mean? Yeah. In entertainment. Yeah, but yeah. I know people plenty who are nowhere near the field of entertainment. And I think the kind of 800 pound gorilla, which is entertainment in Hollywood is what you're talking about and where that, that fakeness comes from. I've heard what you've talked about yeah. called being nice and but, versus kind as well. Yeah. Like okay. the East Coast, yeah, uh, West that. Coast difference, right? Like, like the outside people. versus the inside. Mm-hmm. And versus like, okay, that would make sense. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, be nice. Like, nah, motherfucker, be kind. You know, like, <laughs> you know, because, yeah, I actually like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, it's the, it's like the same lot, thing. Um, it, it's the same thing, but you know what I mean? Like, I know the church communities out here. I know, I know my family. I know people out here who are not in that orbit who just mm. found ways to, you know, make their lives and their whatever their vocation around that oh don't get me wrong it's not again i'm not trying to put like a um i hate the idea of casting with a broad brush but i i tried to part or compartmentalize and say for me the only reason to live in la in the first place is to be in a particular bubble so that's yeah. why I'm, I'm referring yeah I'm, yes. i am talking about a particular bubble but it's like that's the only reason to live out there because if not like why am i out here like i could just come out here and visit you know there's plenty of beaches everywhere. There's other. I go east to the beaches, and they got warm water over there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't know. I go to Kuritu if I want some water. You know what I'm saying? I just go back <laughs> home. Shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, you yeah, know? It, it, I don't it's know. funny too because, you know, we see the beautiful Sandak Alamaur flag behind you, the green, yellow, red with mm. the lion on it. And mm. I know you didn't come out here, for example, for politics, which almost nobody. I mean, you go to D.C. for politics. Well, well, LA. Come to yeah, LA. No. Um, I don't know. And I remember when you lived out here, we connected a little bit. And I try to mm. uh, put you on, for example, to uh, our, our local community in, in South L.A. But I remember yeah. you already had you didn't need connections for me. You already had kind of deep connections. And I, I wonder if you could talk about some of um uh, I don't want to characterize or mischaracterize, but you didn't seem to be, to me, a political animal. But more recently, you've been doing polls, you know what I mean, with your followers. Mm. And you've definitely represented, I think, at minimum, a sort of Ethiopian nationalism. And with being as polite mm. as possible to, you know what I mean, some of the the old, uh, you know, community you may have been with, I could tell you, for example, that that parish is a signatory along with other people. Uh, to have a separate, for example, Tigrayan Orthodox Church. You know what I mean? That's that's one little thing Which separate parish? from the Ethiopian community. You know, Selassie. You know what I mean? In LA, and I love mm. I love individuals. There are there are particular individuals I absolutely love. Some of them are shared between you and I, who have nothing to do with the politics. But uh, you Is know, that it the has church to be... that, I, that I met you at. Is what you saying? No, 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 no. We we. Uh, we we met at so many different events. We, we we talk about it. We met back in 2014. It's been eight years now, brother. We met in uh, yeah. San Jose at the soccer tournament. Right, uh, right, right. That's 20, 2014. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we and we'll yeah. talk about that. But what what I I'm bringing it up to say, it mm. may seem non controversial to you, to you mm. know to rep the flag. But even the mm. repping of the flag right now, people take it mm. as a particular political statement. And people dissect it mm. in many different ways. You know what I mean? Mm. There's the yeah. generic green, yellow, red. There's green, yellow, red with the with the uh, lion flag. And then there are people throwing up regional flags. That's like the state of Ethiopia. Yeah, politics. yeah, yeah. So you know what I mean, I I can speak for myself, right? Mm -hmm. So we talked about this a little bit before, but I'll tell you about this flag. All right. <laughs> so naturally, if you know the flag, you know that's not necessarily the lion of Judah, right? That's just this is just a caricature of what someone believes the flag to look like, right? I found this flag 2012-ish. I have to go back on my Tumblr or something to figure out when it was that I found this flag. But definitely, um, I grew up uh, Ethiopian. I didn't grow up uh, considering myself anything else, right? I didn't. I didn't think about where my great grandfather or, or my grandfather was born, you know, my parents from my teeth, like they made no like I didn't think of any of that shit. You didn't right? have a tribal was, affiliation that they told you about. No, no. Like my my like it wasn't even until I got older that I even like 
understood certain sentiments that certain people did have that I may have heard uh, growing up, but it wasn't anything that was ever ingrained in me. You feel what I'm saying? Like I was never taught that I was Amhara, you know what I'm saying? Or that my great grandmother uh, or somebody was from Tigray and all that. Like I was never taught all that until very, very recently, like very recently, you know? Um, so it's like, the Amara part was uh, is because the majority of my family is like, I, I learned that within the last five, 10 years. But to the extent of like really focusing on that is what I mean, right? Mm -hmm. um, so to me, the like Ethiopian, organizing, like, people yellow, organize around those identities now. Yeah, and that was different, different than I ever. So my exposure to this shit really, um, especially this whole idea the, is when it hit the church, right? Like mm -hmm. you and I, like you still do. I haven't served as a doctor in a very long time, but I served the church growing up, right? Um, ordained by um, my buena Isak, who my dad and him were very, 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 very close. Like he used to be at our house. Like he's the goat. Um, he's my favorite of all time. Yeah, exactly. You know, it 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 actually really tore my family up because him and my dad were like best friends. They built the church around the country together you know um the church the the church in jamaica is like my dad's project with him like uh the, my dad knows a lot of like the the marley family because he was always there i didn't learn i learned all of this a lot of my who my dad is relative to jamaica when i moved in to new york by the way mm -hmm. because it was my it was my rasta family orthodox ethiopian orthodox you ask them they're ethiopian because they're ethiopian you know they have ethiopian names you know what i'm saying they, they go to ethiopian church you know what i'm saying um uh they also obviously jamaican you know what i'm saying um yeah just, but just they, to put this out on a bunay sack that has to be mentioned in the context of what you're saying he's an ethnic yeah. Tigrayan, either family or family friends with abuna paulos who was later the yeah. fifth patriarch and yet he yeah. wanted none of it he wanted none of the the ethnic politics exactly so what people may may not know about like the background of all that is like you know, basically, they they uh, attempted to kind of like move him out of his seat, which mm -hmm. they don't have the power to do, and then then it created divisions locally, right? And I'm I'm spark noting this, right? But it could, it it created divisions locally, and with Dallas being, I don't know if you've been down, oh, you've been down the church in Dallas, right? Dallas yeah. is a big church, especially at the time. I'm I want to say. Because we got the, the, the you know, St. Michael's Church. Like, now there's a bunch of churches, but it used to be the big church. And That's what I want to say it was one of the, yeah, I want to say it was one of the biggest in the country. You know what I'm saying? As far as the open Orthodox churches, you mm -hmm. know, it's, it's pretty big. And um, uh, it was even to the extent that when they were talking about splitting synods and having an American synod, Ethiopian synod, and the headquarters in Dallas, and these sort of things shook up. Um, like even like the core of my house you gotta understand mm -hmm. my dad's name is the signatory on that church you feel me like mm -hmm. like that's how right that was my second home you know um so all of this was my exposure to like what's going on here why is there a different church like they're from like it's a regional thing like what what are we talking about you feel me but even then i'm not really getting it okay i'm about to drop all, I'm about to just put it all right here, bro. Cause I I've got so many crazy perspectives on this, bro. So fuck it. I'm just gonna let it all out here. Not even on my own fucking program. Like, <laughs> all right. So you can so, repost it. <laughs> uh, yeah. There you go. You feel me? So um. So them coming and looking to move him out of the you know being a bishop created a, 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 a shit storm and now you got people choosing sides this that and the other this is my exposure to that um and this is what late uh, 2000s early 2010s like actually like before that because i was still in school um shit starts hitting the fan really shit starts hitting the fan in general in Ethiopia after the 05 whole election shit like shit was already crazy but after 05 like and they started killing all the people and shit hit the fan, right? So then it's like culminates into a whole bunch of stuff, then it hits the church, then it comes here, church just starts splitting all on some like, are you with the decision that the government made to put a new archbishop here? Or are you not because they don't have that control? And like all of this, everything started to split up, right? This is my first um, exposure to it. 
And then fast forward to like 2015, my first trip to Ethiopia. I've said it before, like, and I'm going to say it on this program because in the context of all the stuff that's going on right now, I really need people to understand that, like, it's really, like, people, like, like everybody involved is people, right? It's not, like, statistics. I don't even care about, like, regions and all that. And people are allowed, in my opinion, to have different beliefs, right? Like, I don't control anyone's beliefs, nor do I have the intention to. I'm only going to judge you by how you treat me as an individual person, right? Like, if you treat me with respect, then I'm going to treat you with respect, right? That's just how I am, right? I don't give a shit what you believe in or what you have said or what you might even say somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? You don't got the heart to bring it to me or or if you don't if you don't feel like you that's something infam- that's how you feel about me, then what do I know about some other shit, right? All I'm about to say is about to make sense. Because my first trip to Ethiopia is because people who I consider family, um, who haven't I haven't talked to in a little bit naturally with a lot of stuff that's going on. Especially after I dropped this flag on my Instagram. Yeah. Oh, I got I got a lot of a lot of unfollows, a lot of attrition. I knew you would. I knew you yeah, would. Yeah, it, it was attrition. I say attrition because I got a lot of new followers too. Mm-hmm. And then I had a lot of, and, you, and it'll well, it'll make sense why I say this because in and especially like back home in Addis, it's like when you move around in certain circles, you like the worlds are small and the circles are small. You know what I'm saying? So you start to meet a lot of people. And my first trip out there is with like Dr. Tedros's kids. You know what I'm saying? Like with him. Oh, like that's what that's what li- I lived with Dr. Tedros Adanholm, but the head of the, the WHO. WHO. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So and I, 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 yo, like they treated me like family. I love them as far as I'm concerned, right? Even if, even if I'm unfollowed and I can't be in touch yeah. with them or whatever, like because as far as I'm concerned, like they always treated me like family, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and this, it, it was so spontaneous how it even happened. It's like chilling talking in a bar all of a sudden they call hey whoop, whoop. i'm supposed to go in the summer with one of their one of his kids who lives in america and i don't and so he ends up calling in the winter when i'm living in new york and it's like oh you should go out there and i'm going out there and the other son's out there he's taking care of me you know and i'm only not saying it because i don't want to just like mm-hmm. pull them into some shit but at the same time i'm saying this to say like you know I don't give a fuck about like none of that shit relative to people who I know and love. It's like, I'm not treating you no different. You're not treating me no different. Like even people like, nigga, I got, I don't, like, people have different beliefs from me and I don't care about none of that. It's like, you, you're entitled to your beliefs. It's like, but what is the goal? So I'm to bring it full circle. It's like, I will have, and I'll continue to have, friends and love for people on all sorts of different belief spectrums relative to what what it is it just how Ethiopia is supposed to be and you asked me about Ethiopian nationalism mm-hmm. but even then in and in, in my spectrum of people who I, I am in my life that are very pro Amara the obviously people who circles that I've been in you know meeting imagine if I'm living with them who who I'm who I'm around who I'm meeting every day I'm not even going to name drop because that's, that's dumb, but like none of this is a secret to anybody who's actually following me because shit, it was on my Instagram. It was on my story. You know what I'm saying? Like it wasn't like we were hiding, you know, just, this is, this my, this is family, you know, there's people who I was fucking with like closely, but I also peeped how different their belief system may have been towards certain things than what I grew up believing. And we were close enough to where I would ask questions. You know what I'm saying? Uh, now nowadays though it's like everybody's so stuck on whose side is right or like i would even say that's like the biggest part of it is like wanting to be right as opposed to like just like really understanding like all this shit is wrong like all of this wrong you feel me like it ain't no right (laughs) you know like like yeah and i don't want to box you in when i when i said ethiopian nationalism it's it's yeah. it's partially based off the flag, but I want to just put to couch something to you 
to maybe put it in perspective and for the audience as well. This is like a very yeah. like generic, basic thing, which I mean, because within that, like you said, there's a million diverse perspectives. I spoke at a rally and I told them, you know, straight up, you know, I'm a monarchist. You know what I mean? I'm different. I'm different than a lot of the niggas mm. there. You know what I mean? There's a lot of IB supporters. There's IB detractors. But there's certain things that we agree on and certain things that other people disagree. And I'll tell you two different perspectives. The one I could call a general, you know, TPLF, TDF perspective is about the disintegrity of Ethiopia as a nation state. It's literally about cutting current Ethiopia into three, four, five, as many countries as they want. Another perspective yeah, it, that is similar to a, that is a, is a feminist mm. critique which is interesting for people who actually study like academic feminist theory, but who may not understand they have certain views of what they would consider the Westphalian nation state. This is language that they use. And they, they same thing, would like to see Ethiopia, but more than that, like all of Africa, have no nations and just be different villages here and there. And I have, you know, disagreements. Who's the, who's the they that would like the second one? Uh, feminists. That's the feminist critique. I I oh, name okay, names yeah, of people yeah. too, so, uh, like specific yeah, that, academics. Even, but that that's I like the even, feminist even, critique yeah. of uh, Africa. You could also say it's uh, along the lines of a Marxist critique, like an international world order instead of a national order. Like that's what but I that, mean. When that I would that words. would leave the people so fucking vulnerable. Like they wouldn't they wouldn't learn the lesson from colonialism. Like. Nah, I fuck that. Yeah. I, ain't, I, I ain't with that shit. <laughs> That's but the exactly. first one, the exactly. first one, the first one you were saying, um, I, the, if there's one minor critique of that uh, perspective that I would say is that my understanding of the belief of the previous regime is that they believe that all the all of the, I guess nine regions at the time is now eleven, um, are all individual nations in their own right. Yes. And so Ethiopia is nothing more than just a collective of all these individual nations. Like, you know, there's the Tigray nation, the Amara nation, you know, the uh, Somali nation, right? Yeah. And, um, and not to say that there aren't these ethnicities, right? Because obviously they and 90 something other ethnicities exist, right? which also trips me out because how do you decide and decide for how, which at this you jump into or jumble up into a particular nation where in reality, you know, people have been sprinkled around all over the place um, and intermarried and mm -hmm. uh, all sorts of like, it was a country at the end of the day, a whole, like, obviously if you wanted to drill down on hundreds, thousands of years worth, worth of history, you could, like, honestly, you could go over time and find different invasions of different groups of different lands over all this different time. And that's what creates this ultimate melting pot that you have now, what is Ethiopia. And so, like, and I think there was a, also the biggest thing was there was a misappropriation of, I don't want to say blame, but, like, people were looking at the, the, the previous order of, like, the monarchy and looking at it as, like, Oh, the Amharas, if you will, like obviously that's that's where it comes from. Really, is like this hate for Amharas for some reason, and it's like the Amharas are like were the rulers of blah 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 blah, whatever. And it's like no, the Amharas as a fucking people weren't. You know, the majority of Amharas, just like the majority of everybody else, was poor. Actually, you know what I'm saying? It was Farmers. a particular group. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? There was a particular group, like you know, of elite political elite. Which still exists. The same shit. To say. Democracy is the same shit. It's all the same shit. There's always there's a, there's an elite class, right? And then there's the everybody else. You feel what I'm saying? And for some reason, uh, all of the other uh, regions, ethnicities, nations, whatever, have been able to skirt being uh, involved with the hierarchy that existed in all of Ethiopia, to where it all got pinned on one region. Where it's like there were nobles of all these different regions. There was elites of all these different regions. Like uh, everybody uh, played a role, and just like there were farmers of all these different regions, there were peasants of all these different regions. You know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. I that, think people lost unfolds. sight of the real issue. 
that narrative yeah. unfolds just with the modern emperors. Haile Selassie mm -hmm. is between 50 and 75 percent ethnic Oromo. It's like 25 right. to 50 percent show in Amhara, which is where he claims his his claim to the throne. Menelik's mother is an unknown southerner. People don't know exactly what her ethnicity was, but she's from the south. And then his dad mm -hmm. is mixed Oromo and Amhara, which is where his lineage comes from. Emperor Johannes mm -hmm. is Tigrayan, but his claim to the throne is from his Amhara side. So he himself is right. is is like you go through each and every single one of those. Uh, my grandpa wrote mm -hmm. a letter to then President Meles in November 1991, very early on in the regime, mm -hmm. like super early on, as soon as they put the blueprint for the new map that they were creating from scratch. Yeah. And his yeah, family when they is from, Welkite. Exactly. His family is yeah. Welkite. My my grandfather's mm -hmm. family is Welkite. So one fourth mm -hmm. of me is from that area. And you know my boy Fon, he's he's work IT. Oh yeah, he's probably my cousin too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we got a lot of repeat hey, names. See, my last name's his first name. On the podcast, it's one of the clips on our page. It was like uh uh you know, you grow up thinking everybody your cousin, then you look up, you're like, nah, nigga, that's neighbors, you know what I'm saying? That's not my cousin. You say, yeah. you say, oh, you know, you're you know, you know, they live here, we live here, the cousins. Like, no, motherfucker. But yeah, yeah but, but, I mean, to your, but to I your mean, point, yeah. there's always elites yeah. and I don't know when mm -hmm. Funk's family came out here, but if your family's from Walkait and they came yeah. to the United States in a particular decade, you may very well be my cousin. I'm going to tell you, my grandpa wrote in his book, if, oh, you, right. if you flip yeah. a rock over there, you're going to find one of these cousins. And part of the reason is <laughs> they had connections to the Bala Abbat. And the Bala Abbat, they had a lot of kids. I'll tell you, one of his ancestors had 42 mm -hmm. kids. That's like my grandpa's grandpa. He had 42 kids. And the guy before him had 18 kids. So if you just well, do the math. Baal Abbat. Baal Abbat. Baal means husband, uh, no? Yeah, it also means Lord. So Baal Abbat just oh, means okay. the uh, the people you're talking about, the elites. Oh, okay. No, no, no. I got the, the, okay. the feudals. Not people bad. pejoratively my, call them the feudal. my ignorance. No, you yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. the, 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 the yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. To put them down. But, you know, it's it's the warlords, whatever you want to call them, dukes, the people with titles, Ras, Dajazmach, Meredazmach, Kenyazmach, Garazmach. These are military titles, but they're also uh, aristocratic titles. And so these people had a lot of kids. So, uh, you know, I, I say it like tongue in cheek, but it, can, it might be can real. I, can I say something to you real quick? Because this, this just occurred to me. And, you know, this might be, uh, I told you, I'm just going to let it hang today. Go ahead. This might be a little, little petty, but when I put my uh, uh, my thoughts out there, I don't find I don't think that's an opportunity for people to do anything. But uh, actually, you know, you can critique me if you want, but don't mm -hmm. come at, don't come at me with no bullshit. You feel me? Like you better really know your shit. You feel me? <laughs> like yeah, real talk. You feel me? So, and the thing is, I'm not going to respond either way. Like, you you probably, if you go, oh, I turned my comments off, but he looks like anybody who said something that was, like, in disagreement with me, because it's like, first of all, I do type some shit. I type about 12 pages worth of some shit. And I was like, you know what? I ain't even got it. I ain't even got it. I got it out right here. Ah, I'm good. And I just delete that shit. I don't even bother posting it, right? I let other people argue. But I think it's funny because this reminds me, and... I know someone literally in real life who is trying to claim this. Uh, it's so funny how people quit, switch sides so quickly. It's like trying to claim that they are connected to some sort of ancestral suffering, right? Mm -hmm. This generational suffering, but also claim lineage to like through like uh, I always mispronounce it. Da, 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 say, mm -hmm. say it for me. Dajazmach, which is gate da, da, commander. Thank you. Right. You know, so like, oh, my so and so was, you know, the gate commander, you know, mm -hmm. and then it's like, <laughs> oh, but I come from the downtrodden. Like, which one is it? My name it don't like, work. like, yeah. And, and, and it's funny because a lot of, especially our generation, like, who was born by, like, uh, before Bush, you know what I'm saying? We was born like during Clinton or before, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, um, all of us, uh, uh, shit, first Bush, first uh, Bush and yeah. before, <laughs> yeah, first Bush and before. That's what I really am trying to say. Yeah. Um, I tell people before parents, I had it, I was a dark baby, just barely. 
Yeah, you feel me? I was transitional, babe. Literally, my birthday was the day Mudla took off. Damn. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, or it's very close. Uh, uh, so, um, damn, what was I saying? You were saying that people so, try anyway, to claim anyway, that they're historically downtrodden, our, our, but they're also from parents, the aristocracy. Yeah, that generation, a lot of them, the reason why they got out was because they got some sort of uh, – some sort of connection like the mm-hmm. people who was really out of there was not getting out of there you feel what i'm saying yeah. like That's you right. have to have some you got to have money to get up out of there you got to have shit even the the thought process to be like to, to understand the scope of like most of, most of the people who ain't really paying attention to like who don't have the proximity to know like the extent of what's going on or you know what i'm saying or even anyway you get what i'm saying so um yeah it's a different it's different yeah. migrations my boy told me his family came in the 90s in dc so people who came in the 90s especially 2000s to dc is a different crowd than people i know from the 50s 60s and 70s in la it's it's a different crowd yeah. to your point or the 80s that migrated to dallas you know what i'm saying like you know what i'm saying they may have got here for some other city and just like people just started coming to dallas you feel me uh late 80s early 90s you feel me? And then towards the nineties is when all this came together. But um it's just interesting, bro. And again, like I really wanna appeal to the idea that like as a diaspora, we really gotta get our shit together. Because ain't none of us fighting no fucking war over there. So all this hooting and hollering and shit that we doing, it's like, you know, and I say we but really, like, I've asked, I, I, I stand by what I believe. And I'm going to stay with what I believe. And the re- only reason why I said who I was kicking it with before and, and I was to provide uh, perspective on, like, on my perspective. Right? And, like, when I say the reason why I haven't said shit is because I know too many fucking people on both sides of this shit. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, and, I, and I feel like it's almost like, Especially at the beginning, it was like, and because I hate that shit when people be like, "Oh, why didn't you say shit?" It's because nigga, out of out of fucking empathy is why I wasn't saying shit. Like from the beginning, I already knew what I believe. You feel what I'm saying? But it's like, damn, like it's a lot of people suffering. I'm not gonna compound that by coming out and being like, "Why the fuck did them niggas start the war?" You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like, where where really that's like the, that's like my question. It's like if you're the government, why would you put your people in danger? Like, what's your intent? What was the goal? Like, okay, it's preemptive. Even if I'm going with that, you know, by doing what? Like, there's cause and effect to every fucking thing. So, you know, by doing this, this is about to happen. By starting a fucking war, there's about to be some suffering. You know what I'm saying? And war is not like, it's not no, like, you know, like, rock, paper, scissors shit. Like, these niggas is really out here. War equals atrocity. So, that's the other thing that blows my mind. It's like, don't be rah rah about war and then be like, oh, atrocity. Like, Duh, nigga, that's what war is. That's why motherfuckers don't want war, you know, because yeah. they, know, they like, knew they knew and they didn't care, which is why I like the poll that you put out. I don't know if it was yesterday or today about yeah. telling them what would you would you like in a uh, surrender or are you trying to just keep fighting forever? And I tell them that every day, by the way, I'm crazy on Twitter. I tell Geta yeah, I yeah, tell that nigga in Amharic yeah. and in Tigrinya to surrender every day. <laughs> Bro, I love that shit, bro. And then you be speaking in some type of fucking judo English even. I'd be like, bro, I can't keep up with half of what this nigga is saying, bro. I need to go read a book. That's how I be feeling when I read your tweets sometimes. I'd be like, bro, I thought I was smart. They put me in gifted and talented when I was young. You know what I'm saying? They told me I was a genius. And I don't know what the fuck he's talking about right now. But, uh, no, nah, that should be that should be crazy. Like, fucking yeah, Wu-Tang. so his family. That's, that's what I, you I, remind I, me of. You remind me of Ethiopian Wu-Tang. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Those are, those are my influences those are my influences okay you know, okay those are, makes sense. it makes we're sense. time forever but uh w- one of yeah. one of the things i want to touch on before we we move on because i love this because we bringing out a, a side of you that i think people haven't seen as much and i'm so glad you're blessing yeah. our program with that and we will get to the to yeah. the creative stuff obviously still respecting your time but the guy the main ah. spokesman the main spokesman yeah. of the tplf right now Getacho Redda, he's from an area mm-hmm. called raya azabo my family, mm-hmm. I told you, my grandpa, he's from Walkait. By the way, mm-hmm. from that same side, uh, we believe in seven generations in our tradition. My seventh ancestor is like a genuine Tigrayan, like from Makala, Hintalo, like genuine Tigrayan. But obviously, the majority, the majority of me is Amhara. 
right after I was born and that transition you were talking about, they literally changed the definitions of words. And they called where my grandpa's from Western Tigrayan. By their logic, I'm not like just whatever seventh generation, whatever that makes you like 3%. I jump up to like 25% Tigrayan mm -hmm. because they call mm -hmm. all of Walqait, Humarat, Agadit, Alam, that whole area Western Tigray. Yeah. Whereas when I was born, Western Tigray was Shira and Aksum and Yeha, which is nobody's doubting those areas. And where Getacho Radda is from, Rayazabo, that was oh, a part of what you said. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah they changed the maps. Um, the they redistricted. Yeah, of course. To use American yeah. language, yeah, yeah. they redistricted. Yeah. And those lands were a part of Begemder or Gwandar and Wallo. And so that's 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 part of even like the peace talks. They're saying like they say there will be no peace unless they get those lands back. Via the war, those lands have been entered into the Amhara region, and what their future is is a question mark. And we're not going to get into all that, but I just wanted to point out their main spokesman. When he was born, like his family is from Wallo. When my family was born, they're from Gwandar. But both his family and my family, where their land is from, according to the map of 28 years, was a part of Tigray. And that that is so much in like the BBC, the CNN. It's in the language everywhere. It It's hard to combat, but it's like a personal Right, because his, his is considered Southern Tigray. Just so people understand, yes. it's not. You're, it's not also in Western Tigray. It's no. They 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 took both. They took exactly. both Southern Tigray and Western Tigray. Where in reality, Tigray was actually instead of being this far west and this far south, it was actually more east. You know, what I'm saying what is now part of Afar was previous Tigray mm -hmm. up in the northeast, extended all the way out into Eritrea. But yeah, I'm it, with you. Yeah, and 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 it's it's changed a lot. Honestly, I I want to put it aside and I want to focus on. Uh, you've had so many podcast episodes, and I'm not just a podcast producer. I'm a consumer. I'm a fan. Again, that's why Word. I had you on this on the show. And I wanted to jump yeah. in one episode. I forget which episode it was. I don't know if you, if you remember, but you talked about being a deacon and not being as active. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I remember yeah, I wanted yeah, to yeah. jump in on that conversation. It was so juicy. But you know the nature of these conversations. The, the topic shifted. But I remember they were they were putting pressure on you. And, but they were they were asking an interesting question, and mm. I remember your answer was something to the effect: that "It's not that I I don't love God, you know. It's that I've got you know a different I got a different point of view. I I feel the pressure recently, believe it or not. Uh, you know, Mary Deacon now a lot of people within the clergy and without they put this pressure on me now. Like they think the next step is automatically you have to become a priest, especially like a case. Yeah, exactly. And the language ability I have, you know, that's something they're thirsty for, you know, with all due respect. Mm. And it's not something mm. that I see for myself. Uh, definitely not for the next mm. 10 years, you know, if anything, mm. in 15, 20 years, but definitely not. The yeah. Next I, 10 got, years. I got a story so I feel for you, you. bro. Yeah, please. I want to. I want to hear you, and I think this is the the right program for it because they, they yeah. switched topics on me. And as a commenter, I was like, "Ooh, give me that." Yeah, and this is like a lot of how we connect too, or how we connected, you know, in the past. Um, so I told you about my proximity to the church, really, is um, because of my dad. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, both my parents are very, very involved in the church, but like my mom wasn't super like forceful on like the me and clergy relationship you know what i'm saying like that was my dad and that is because of his not just not because but of the same energy of his relationship with abu Nisa, right it was like he was so involved in the church he himself wasn't a doctor so i want to say it was a lot of that like projection you know um living by cares to see some sort of thing so i bring it up from that perspective because even my initial involvement in the church right was not like truly of like my own like volition or interest you know what i'm saying it was like i was pushed from the beginning you feel me but it wasn't like i just didn't want to do it because like i was like against it it was just more so like i've always been very um i've always like been very internally conscious about like me making my own decisions me like my autonomy you feel what i'm saying and um but naturally like like I'm actually extremely grateful for it because it helped build the foundation of who I am as a person and as a man, like my spirituality, my faith, you know what I'm saying? So I really got to tap in to a different 
space, I feel like, because like that was how I was raised. I was raised, you know, uh learning good, you know, like in Jam and with my and conduct like I'm like I'm like you feel me? Like that's no. that this <laughs> yeah, this is like this is where uh this is what I was consuming my time with as a as a young person, you know? And so um I'm grateful for that. Um so as I got older and I get more exposed to the, the the rest of the world. Um, I am keenly aware of my humanity. Mm-hmm. You feel me? As opposed to like, and this is where things can maybe be twisted or misconstrued or misunderstood as a child, which is like, um, like obviously you understand we're, we're none of us are divine, but like having to uphold yourself to this certain standard of like living, right? You know what I'm saying? And uh, I'll, I'll never forget in second grade, I was like convinced that I was fasting. And I, I, and this is how I knew I equivocated fasting to like the wrong thing, right? Well, maybe I didn't, but um, we weren't supposed to have milk, right? Naturally. And my um, teacher in second grade had made these like caramel apples or something, something that had like cinnamon and sugar and apple. Like I could have had it. But I was like, I didn't, I just, something about like, no, I'm fasting. I can't have that. Right. And I just uh, like, this was, you know, this is just like how I was living. And I get older. Dude, first of all, I, I start throwing house parties when I'm young because my dad, both my parents didn't really want us out and about, but they trusted what, what they could control. One, all of our parties were super like innocent to an extent. Like it's like, kids dancing and you know when you're young it's like grinding and all that shit whatever they call it nowadays but like (laughs) nothing no no drugs no alcohol none of that shit it's just like the same shit you would have at a school dance except no teachers breaking you up when you get too close you feel me um like that was like my shit growing up so i'm already becoming i'm and i'm a very i was a very social like i lived a club promoter life no bullshit starting at 10 years old you feel what I'm saying? Like it would be a thing. Like when you throwing your next party. My birthday was the beginning of the school year. My sister's birthday was the end of the first semester. So we had like and we had like a rotation going. You feel me? Like, um, uh, I say all this to say I'm becoming exposed to like all these different things. And then I'm like getting older. I'm I'm just like yo, I'm doing all this and then I'm going and like standing in front of the clergy and like you know. It, it was fucking with me. You feel me? And then the older I got, the only the worse it got, right? The the, the parties and shit was nothing. But I, I say that as a, like the, to set the trajectory of where life mm-hmm. went, right? I grew up in the in the suburbs of Texas, bro. Like in Dallas, you know what I'm saying? Like uh, there was nothing that wasn't in close proximity. Let me say it like that. You feel what I'm saying? I, I grew up in a good neighborhood. And you know, a good neighborhood mean them kids is up to no good. You feel me? Like, they got access to everything. It's the only difference. They got access to everything. And it's like, they just got money. It's like, it's different. You know what I'm saying? It's not like, I didn't grow up in the hood at all. We was in the hood when I was like, until I was like four or five. And my pops got us up out of there. And we, we moved out the hood. And I never lived in the hood ever since. But um, this is, these exposure brought me to, you had that exposure plus the spiritual exposure, right? And it just created this like battle and I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna have to just like respectfully bow out. You feel me? Like not that I feel it's like for me it was like out of reverence, you know? Like I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't imagine going to the club and or like bagging some chicks or something. And the thing is like it's not even like I was really about that because my foundation was so strong. I still I ain't never really been about that life. Like could I be out there running around like being a dog? Probably never been about that life. Still to this day, my foundation didn't change. But it was the thought, you feel what I'm saying? <laughs> the thoughts was all I needed to be like, ah, I can't be, I can't be like this. And like something, it's like something adding up. I almost felt like I'm supposed to be like a monk or something, you know? Like I, I like I can't, you know? And then you get older now and I realize, you know, everybody's human. It's like I'm, accepting more of my humanity now than I was when I was 18, 19, where I was really just like fucking like such a 
And then on top of that, the church falling apart. You know what I'm saying? Like, so now my foundation is falling apart, right? Like I, like my relationship with the church was already in its thing, you know what I'm saying? And then the church itself is doing all this thing. And then my family, which is like this with the church, you know what I'm saying? Imagine those 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 effects come home. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So it's like all of that shit just started to change my life, and I was just like, yeah, I gotta go. I, like my relationship up here doesn't necessarily need to be confined within um, like that particular uh, any particular building or any particular like. Um, I don't say ritual, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I just had to take some space away. But at the same time, it also, like, whenever I do go to church or go to Kandaki, it's like, it's also, like, just a very, you know, it's a very, uh, like, I still tear up during Gio Amada Nicholas. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so it's just, the, and I'm actually, and I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful to be uh, in tune with my um, spirituality in that way. You feel me? But that it, it's like there's just so much that went on, and like I was just so tied to the church in so many different ways. Like it wasn't like I couldn't go home and get away from the church. Like my household, my mama was one of the, you know people running the kitchen. My daddy was the one running the shit in the boardroom. My uncle, who basically is like my second daddy, is the one writing out the you know the 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 you know, picking out the what we're doing. Can I say that? Uh, you know, <laughs> it's all, I, I lived, like, my house was the church and my church was the house. You feel me? So it was just like, when that shit fell apart, it was like, yo, like, what are we doing? And that also ties into what we were talking about earlier. It's like, that's, I didn't realize, I didn't realize, like I said, we put it all out there today. I didn't realize what was going on with the ethnicity shit until one of the priests who was, like, really close to my family, his daughter is technically my god sister, because my mother is the priest's youngest uh, daughter's godmother. You feel me? And um, you follow me on Instagram. Um, you know, uh, his son, who's also a dog owner, um, you know, one of them just got married. I was there, of course, turning up with him. Every type of music being played at this wedding, right? Uh, um, his other son, also a dog owner. We had Thanksgiving together. I you know, had that post about how like all of us OG Dallas people, we never really looked at them. He's leading the prayer and we're all praying for Ethiopia together as one people, but they're all from Sigar, right? And I didn't even realize that until we're not going to the same church no more. And his dad, and you know, and they're, re- they're leading a congregation at a different church. And then because of what went on at the church and relative to my household, my mama is at a different church now. And, you know, my grandmama, because she dedicated her life to St. Gabriel, she done built a church, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like, I swear, this is my life, bro. Like, it's like, my, it's like from one church, we're like in four different churches. You feel me? It's just like, um, it's just like that whole thing just made it just very strange. And then funny enough, I go back home, like I said, you know, um, uh, uh, I'm like debating whether or not like I like I don't want to like say people's names that they don't want to be talking about right. But at the same time, like it's people who I love, so I don't want to like not say their names and it'd be weird. You feel what I'm saying? So I'm in a I'm in a I'm in a, just candidly speaking to you, I'm in an interesting space right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but but I, I, I always tell say, people you could I just say the story or the name and that'll that'll save you the the trouble. So you could just say the story and they could fill in the blank. Yeah, you know, so, um, you know, my going back home, being with who I was with and all who surround that apparatus, I learned a lot about what the mentality was behind, like, Ethiopia from 91 to 2000, at that point, 15. You feel mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah, people connected um, I to learned, the regime people connected to the regime like obviously like directly connected or part of the regime um or or their dad was founder of the regime or former prime minister get my drift you feel me so it's like 
um, and really just hearing how like like how these perspectives where they come from it's like it's so hard for me to be a, I can't be mad at them now because like this is how they've always thought about it. it's like they are in their mind they're just as right as how I or anyone else may think that they are with uh, about their own perspective right um so until you drill down and ask very specific questions and get very specific answers I'm not finna jump to no conclusions all I know is that at the end of the day like I don't see eye to eye with you on on this particular thing and and that's like for example you brought up the regional flag right you brought up this that and the other it's like you know I'm from Texas bro Mm-hmm. If there's any fucking state in the United States of America that would pull this shit, yep. it's Texas. Okay? The day Greg Abbott, stupid ass, talk about raising 250,000 people militia, and we're going to go after the U.S. Army, will be the day I am no <laughs> longer a resident of Texas, bro. <laughs> like, what the fuck are you talking about? Why would we do that? Mind you, Texas has its own grid. Our economy is great. Our economy is the same size as France's. It's not bigger, right? We have the ninth biggest economy in the world in the state of Texas, not even the whole country. You feel me? So, oh, so I say this to say, it ain't like with the situation back home. Like, we are, our own grid means you can't shut this shit off. You feel what I'm saying? Right? So, it's like, you know, that also means when, when winter storms come every 10 years and, and the greedy motherfuckers don't want to let the people have uh, cheaper electricity they can it all crashes too to be fair but it's really simple to understand this when you look at it objectively right so we just gonna get into it right because you asked me about nationalism too and we just gonna tie a bow on all that shit one i believe that all of ethiopia at the end of the day no matter where you what language you speak which is how the lines were actually uh, drawn in 91 was a uh, ethno-linguistic lines, which is why Romania is so damn big. Um, uh, none of that shit really has any basis in like time that it was created. You know what I'm saying? And like, none of that shit has any basis on the shit. The screen is still recording. Uh, oh man, the Steam screen stopped recording a while ago, I think. Okay, maybe we still got now. it on my I'm end. A, I'm a, I'm a, I hit record again. All right, yeah. All right. We we could do part um, one, and part two off flash. your phone version. We got we got Google Meet version. I can't hear you now. Call back in with your phone. Yeah, call, call back in. Technical difficulties, everybody, but we're going to work it out right now. Stay with us. Stay tuned. Another time, obviously, to plug again, patreon.com slash Aksum. So Benny Hunters comes back in here. Of course, you could join the YouTube channel directly at multiple levels. I also have titles on the Patreon as well as on the YouTube channel that have the original titles. And here, Benny Hunters is back. Yeah, we got you. Yeah, yeah, my bad, bro. You know, I'm trying to screen record, but it's uh, not working. Okay, for you, we, we anyway, got the Google Meet. That's all right. Google Meet gonna figure it out. You know, I'll be trying to have my own record. You feel <laughs> me? But uh, I, I respect it. I respect it. It's part of the craft. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you feel me? But no. So, um, I believe that we're all we're all more mixed up than we than we think we we are. Mm-hmm. One. I believe that the idea of this um, singular ethnic um, uh, elite idea, like the, the one ethnic group 
was the ultra elite or some weird shit like that is all also false, right? Um, classism at, is the issue and has always been the issue and will probably always be the issue so long as like greed controls humanity. Um, and uh, um, yeah, it's time to, 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 to chop these, these damn, chop these regions up a little bit, mix them up, do whatever you need to do to where we can uh, go on with a prosperous Ethiopia that recognizes each other. Cause like federalism doesn't necessarily have to be based off of anything outside of like, the borders can be arbitrary. The, the, the states of America were arbitrary. Like besides Texas who wanted to remain a slave owning state. So we gave Oklahoma that little strip, right? Uh, like little things like that. You want this, you want that, chop it up, make it whatever needs to be made, give people the right to, to choose what they want, um, all that shit. I don't remember exactly what I was saying before we got um, It was along those lines. It was like uh, you were talking about, again, me not boxing you in, but saying on a mm-hmm. base level, there's got to be some Ethiopian nationalism to you because you're not you're not ashamed of the flag. The national flag versus the regional flag I don't, that people are. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what we're talking about. Bingo. I was saying how Texas uh, decides to go to war. I'd be like, y'all tripping. You feel mm-hmm. me? Um, and I say that to say I, I I prefer to try to speak light of this, even though obviously it's not something light. It's like because well, it's like you got to laugh to keep from crying, right? Yeah. Like, like because the truth of it is, is that I don't care how anybody or like I, I'm not. And I say it like that. I'm not here actually to diminish anybody's pain, right? What I'm here to say is that the response or like continuing the war ain't gonna make your pain go away. You feel me? Like that's that's really the fact, right? And then so uh, the the quickest thing to actually make your pain go away is for the war to stop. It's actually the opposite, right? The war ending is the quickest route to people um to reconciliation or just even healing before reconciliation it's just like so motherfuckers start licking their wounds right and then you get into like how do you get to that right how do you get to the war ending because one side is saying that one side is trying to punk the other side either way it goes right so we're we're um at the point in human evolution where we create loss like we have like like whether we like it or not, we have land, we have countries, we have sovereignty, we have constitutions, we have rules, right? Um, and I feel like that is where this whole shit went awry. It's like when whichever party decided that we are not going to continue to abide by the the rules of this game which the game is parliament and votes and this and that that's a game in itself politics is a game right but what did uh what did they say on um uh, on uh that fucking the movie with uh homeboy daniel kalua about uh the panthers right war um war is just is politics with guns and politics is war without guns Mm-hmm. Right. So what happened was if we're gonna keep it keep it a buck, right? You gotta wind this thing back. Really, what I'll be coming into power comes into motion two thousand twelve. You feel what I'm saying? Hundred percent. Like like that people don't people when really got to put and Abuna Paulos both passed away. And by the way, that happened at a time when with the shake they were trying to build sugar factories in Welkait at the Waldeba Monastery. And that was the last straw. That's when the protests in D.C. started. They say, you're not touching mm. the Waldeba Monastery. And then mysteriously, mm. they passed away. It's up to, you know, people to decide what, what that was about. I mean, I mean, I ain't touching that one right now. You feel <laughs> me? I ain't touching that one right now. Because people don't even want to start thinking about why, what was, what was Mullah's on at the time? Right. What, what was he? What? Just think chronologically. Listen to his last few speeches. Think about what infrastructure projects had started on the time. There was a lot going on. Think about what other world or African leaders died at the time. There was a lot going on in global politics 
that I think pe- people didn't don't realize like there's a reason why, in my opinion, a lot of these people, it's the same sort of wave that was going on back when, you know, uh, you know, X and Martin and Kennedy and like a certain people who had a certain idea about a certain world order, all of them got knocked off of the same, uh, his imperial majesty, everybody was in a particular group, all got wiped out, right? And you look at Africa around that time, a lot of Gaddafi, all right, so you get me, all right. I don't think any of that is not connected, okay? But I'm going to keep it to you real quick because at that point in time, you know, uh, think about who's in the leadership of the country, right? The Sal- the Salih al was the deputy prime minister, you know, so that's how he ended up being the prime minister, right? You know what? I told you we're going to let it all hang today, bro. This might be your longest podcast, bro, because we about to talk, bro. I'm with it. All right. You know, the Sali Haile Mariam, I'm sorry, I'm getting notifications. The Sali Haile Mariam and Avi from the same church. Okay? And um, the Sali Haile Mariam coming into that position was by procedure, right? It was, it was by um, what's the fucking word I'm looking for? Protocol, right? You're, you're, the, the president gets knocked off here, the VP becomes president, right? It's pretty straightforward. Um, but the strings and the, the pullers of the strings never changed, okay? There's, all, there's been unrest. Shit turns up once the, the hammer is not there anymore, right? Let's call it spade a spade, okay? Mullah's passing away left a void, okay, huge void. Um, and no clear successor. Oh, let me let me say that. Who was the most loved politician at that time? Ironically, think about where we're at today. That's why I said ironically. Ten years ago, the most loved politician in Ethiopia, or one of the most loved politicians in Ethiopia. He's only a politician by title because really. He's over the Ministry of Health. That's your other hint. You feel what I'm saying? It's Dr. Tedros. People loved Dr. Tedros at, at that time, especially. He's a very humble dude. Like I said, it's the dude. I say was, is, for all I, like, again, there's a version of him I know as someone who had very close proximity to the man. You feel what I'm saying? I don't know about what he was doing. Obviously, people know more about the actual work he was doing. There's a lot of shady shit that may have went on. I'm not discounting none of that, right? Um, I just, what I'm saying is people may have accepted that, but they weren't going to put another person from TPLF into power that quickly. It would have been too obvious. That damn sure ain't putting no Amada up earlier because you already know how they feel about Amadas, right? So they keep it kosher, protocol, the Italian Hamadians in power. Cool. The strings are where they at. Then it's state of emergency, then it's 2015, or 2016, it's Olympics, it's throwing up the X, all this stuff going on, right? All right, well, the Salih Haramayam, Deputy Prime Minister, is Demaka Mokonen, who is Amhara, ADP, right? I think is their um, their group, AD, uh, their, their uh, political party that they contribute to EPRDF. Um, so, Naturally, Demaka Mokonen stepping aside, I mean, um, the Falling Hadamayam stepping aside should put Demaka Mokonen in power. Nah. Because what I said earlier, they're not going to put no Amada in power. Not at the top. People ain't ready for that yet. You feel me? So he says, all right, I'm going to hold a special election. Dun, 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 and we're going to have a sort of internal thing within here. This is a political coup. This is what I said. War is politics with guns. Politics is war without guns. This is how they lost the power, right? Internally, right, while they thinking they still pulling the strings, okay, they say, all right, well, who's going to be the new leader? We need somebody we can trust. We still need to pull the strings. We still need to, oh, well, ain't nobody finna vote for Deborah Jones. 
it's not happening. Right, so TPLF not he's not going to be the prime minister. I mean, they 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 tried it, but no. Southern nations persons is not super uh, viable. Honestly, the the favorite who would win in an internal vote would be Denmark McConnell. And then you have the ODPOC, right? Because each sub party gets to nominate someone. Naturally, with the unrest, they want an Oromo. Lama is the chairman, and if you know his politics, they ain't going for that shit either. One. And two, the main thing is the qualifications to be prime minister of Ethiopia is you got to be the chairman of the party and you got to be a member of parliament, which Lemo was not, so he was disqualified. So what do they do? The person who didn't just get out the way and allow the deputy to come up, the person who decided to hold a special election, the person who comes from the same inner circle as Abi says, or not he himself, but they all decide, let Abi take Lemma's place and become the chairman of ODPO, now me, now being, uh, now qualifying, meeting both qualifications of being the head of your party and being a me- member of parliament. They put him in in the election, you know, shit gets whittled down, it's four people, it's three people, it's Demica and him and Devastion and Southern, and then Demica puts all his weight behind Abi. This is another move. You feel what I'm saying? This is this is when you say, "Oh, this shit's all coordinated." They knew what they were doing. They needed to get somebody they could that they could trust, while also TPLF trusted him because they said, "Oh, he's a TPLF baby. He wanted us. He was our spy. He was the head of our uh, cybersecurity. She created the shit. You know, she's the founder. He was a former military. He grew up. He he wanted our little war babies. He speaks sure. to me, yeah." He speaks to you know what I'm saying? Sure, Avi, come on, buddy. Come be our prime minister. Just don't listen to everything I have to say. You're going to do it around the country like I said it. But uh, you know what I'm saying? And then he got up in there and it was like, nah, player. This is when shit hit the fan very quickly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because he came in there and, and and this actually relates even to the most recent uh, people coming out of jail. Who is he on tour with? Right, he's going on tour. His little, I, I went to the to USC when he was in LA. Me too. I was me? in the crowd. Yeah, you know, um, 2018, I think. Yeah, it was. You know, when he first got in, he went to DC. I was, I was with. Um, I'm, I've always, I've, I've always, uh, at that time, especially even more so than now, really, because of the consulting work I did with ESFNA and the strong relationships that me and my partner developed, like built there. Um, shout out to AMX. The professor. Uh, the professor, right? Uh, professor AMX. Um, because of those relationships, we always kept in touch. As a matter of fact, that's how I found out that about what was going on with homie in LA and who his dad, like who his dad was, and all that. Like I was so late to that party because I'm fairly detached, honestly, from all this social media shit. Besides what's going on back home, right? Um, and um, I'm talking and I'm like, yo, this this dude obviously trying to come here, and they talking to me, about, and I'm I'm reaching out to them like, yo, are y'all gonna? Because they had first dibs. People don't understand ESF and they had first dibs. You feel me? On Avi, you feel me? But because of the climate, and they didn't even they didn't have enough uh, resources to at least they didn't feel to secure the situation. You know what I'm saying? Like, how the fuck are we gonna have him here? Like. We're not finna have this dude get assassinated and like this is their perspective, liability, right? We can't have some shit go down and it happens at our shit, you know what I'm saying? And this is before they set up the tour, this is before anything. It's like, um, so I kinda understood from that extent, but I would have still if I'm ESFNA, mind you, my role in, with them was helping reset their brand, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I'm like, bro, this is <laughs> this is a, well, you know, you got you first did on, on the on the news answer the throne like come on you know so uh but you got to be ready to be first dibs right right people so passed on jordan to... right in the draft facts right so anyway so um i say all that to say i'll be coming through he's on tour with lemma who's a separatist you know what i'm saying like and with jawar right like these are the folks and he's talking about peace we're gonna do our uh, Omara or Aramo, or uh, he, he found a way to, to put the words together and say, you know, we about the gang gang and shit, we good, you know what I'm saying? And then 
gets in the office. And mind you, I mean, there's a reason why he gave him the Nobel Peace Prize. This man was on the tour. You would have thought he was motherfucking stupid. He was just, you know, you, we saw this crisis. We saw this crisis. Sudan, y'all good? The yeah, big one was good. Eritrea. He gave him body. Obviously. Money. That was the biggest. Obviously, right? I was getting there. I was building up. You feel me? And then he gets up to Eritrea and he's like, all right, here's your land. Man, there's a, there's a picture that blows my mind when we think about it in today's time, where it's him, Isaiah. And everything, and he joins their hands together, right? And you know, it's like, wow, very nice. And it's like, bro, <laughs> like, you know, I wonder, I really wonder what everybody's mind was in that moment, right? Because I know, obviously, what these two dudes is that, obviously, because look where we at. But like, I wonder if Abby really, 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 really believed that, like, everything was going to be okay. You know what I'm saying? Or was there a tension in that space that the image could not, maybe couldn't even convey? I will never know. But um, it's hard to get into his psychology. But I think at the minimum, you could say he was going to shoot his shot and attempt it. Yeah. And so, you know, I don't even remember how I got on this whole timeline thing about how we got to where we are. You were saying oh, yeah. he had to trace the route. Like it's not 2020, yeah. 2021. It's not just Thank now. You. Yes. Back it wasn't just like it. It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't just, oh, 20 and, and, and November 3rd, these niggas like, went to war. Like, no, bro. First of all, think about how the, the slow chipping away at their power that's gone on over the last decade now. We're in 2022 now, right? Mm -hmm. So over decade, the last decade, right. you feel what I'm saying? Over the last decade, there's been a chipping away at TPLS power, right? And it, it, it really hasn't, at first, it wasn't really intentional it was just by the nature of the fact that the leader and their faith was gone you feel what i'm saying and so um and there like you said there wasn't any true line of succession set up for who was going to run the show and that left a void which left the opportunity that it took 10 years but now we're coming to see that the rest of the country who may not have necessarily i shouldn't say the rest of it in all honesty there's probably people all over the place on multiple sides of this whole thing, but the people in power now are coming, who were the majority of which were part of the last regime, by the way, right? Um, they're all in a space where it's like this. This isn't. This is a culmination of a decade's worth of efforts, a decade's worth of maneuvering and shifting, and like they bet. A co their collective bet went on the obby horse. You feel what I'm saying? Like, that's where they placed their bet. They were like, all right, if it's going to be anybody who's going to do it, it's going to be this guy, you know? And now they got to ride that horse out. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's it. Like, and they're off. And you hoping, like, after these laps, he, he finishes the race and he's the horse that wins. Because if not, the country is so fucked. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I mean that shit so seriously, right? Like, People don't understand, like, I don't, it really don't matter how you feel about them. Like, ain't nobody running that country any better than Abby's, that Abby's about to run that country. Like, if not Abby, who's going to run the country? I like Mustafa. I like him. Mm -hmm. Right? But I don't know I where like his head Colonel is at. I like Colonel Azode of World I like it. I, I, yeah, I, yeah, I love, I love, like, that's, that's a real jerk and I, he's a real G. But we don't know if he wants, because politics is a different no. thing. You talk about right. Wu Tang, if you know the Lone Wolf, which is sampled mm -hmm. on Jizz's Liquid Swords. I mm. always tell people I've talked about this online, but Colonel Demak Zode <laughs> is the Lone Wolf sampled yeah. on Jizz's Liquid Swords. In in that yeah. in that uh, movie, which is sampled on Jizz's album, there's a Shogun's decapitator, and the Shogun turns against him and sends ninja assassins to kill him in the night. And what happens uh, is the decapitator takes care of him. This man was a sniper for the old regime, and they sent ninja warriors at him in the middle of the night. He marked them all. They got nervous. Yeah. They said, turn yourself in to the Tigrayan government. He said, no, thank you. He turned himself into Gwondar. That man sat in jail. Uh, they didn't touch him because that would have that would have led to a civil war against Gwondar. Yeah. He would have rose up. Yeah. And yeah. then now look where he is. He's running Welkite right now. He's running quote yeah. unquote Western Tigray. Like Yeah. And it's crazy because you know the letter he just wrote to um Avi today, 
He's, I know you heard about that, obviously. I, right? I haven't read it yet. Tell me about it. I haven't read the letter, um, uh, like the actual letter, but it's it's pretty straightforward what it's saying. And it's actually not just him. There are many Amhara leaders in the federal government. So these are people I be appointed who have come out over the last week and basically said, like, yo, we're not having a conversation about what guys. Like, it's not even part of the conversation. Y'all can have this national dialogue. We could talk about all this other shit. <laughs> but there's not a conversation to be had about what guys, as it is relative to the Amhara region, essentially, is where we're at now. It's like, don't even, don't even, don't even go there, bro. Because now you're about to stir up a whole nother shit. We didn't already fought a whole year for this shit. We're at where we're at. Pack it up. Let's go. You feel me? And I feel like that's probably why, uh, you know, there's always backdoor dealings and, and conversations that aren't being had. That's probably why the what was was considered Southern Tigray has been retaken again. You feel what I'm saying? It is like it, can, it you could look at it from multiple perspectives. From the TPLF side, it could be like we need to try to get them to spread th- spread it thin mm-hmm. and it may be from the other side like the reason why they're they're not enforcing that too much is because it's like hey which like what are we what are we which 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 angle are we after you know what i'm saying and uh like you said you know i like how you say it the best uh colonel uh, colonel <laughs> colonel <laughs> yeah that's how they like, be saying it that's i know i'll be saying yeah. colonel but they be saying colonel yeah yeah, but you gotta say the whole name, bro. Demak Azode, yeah. Yeah, call <laughs> Demak Azode. Like at the end of the day, like he's um uh, they're not going, bro. They're not they're not moving. And um my I, I've seen a bunch of different maps. I don't know if I sent you uh um this one I have in my phone, I sent it to certain people just to gauge where they at. But I've seen one where World Guys is like its own region, basically. Like World Guys Humera is like its own region. And then like the Amhara, there's Amhara region, Wallo is its own region, Shoa. And so it's kind of like the old map, mm-hmm. except Gojam basically doesn't exist. And uh, I'm just yeah. being honest. It's like what was Gojam, Western Gojam, it turned into Matakal and Beni Shangu, which is like just like that strip that covers the West, and basically Sudan and the dam. And then what is left of Gojam gets jumbled, jumbled up with Gondor, Minus one guy, and that's the Amhara region. Um, I have some disrespectful then, things that I have said uh, publicly about Beni Shangul that I'm repeating what my grandpa said in, in November 1991. He said, hey, ain't hmm. never heard of this. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I tell people certain stories and they don't believe it, you know, but people have literally been eaten, you know what I mean, in that region. People have been killed with poison-tipped arrows, bow and arrows in 2021. Uh, talking about scores of people, not like thousands, but like a, 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 anywhere between 80 and 200. You know what I mean? I've read accounts. And uh, What are you talking about, man? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, 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 I'm talking about that region, you know. With all due respect, I don't want to say too much, but, you know, I, I don't believe in whoever's doing governance there should be allowed to do governance. But as far mm. as what I on its own, I'm actually pretty open-minded. And that's there is actual historical evidence for – uh, Simeon, sometimes it's called Simeon. One of my ancestors, his name is Ras Gabriel mm. Simeon. Is a Simeon. And not th- there is there is a history of either independence or attachment to uh, Gondar. By the way, there's also them conquering Tigray and putting it together with Tigray, but with Tigray underneath, not the other way around. There, there's no actual history of the other way around outside of the Italian colonial period. So I'm I'm actually open minded to like an independent one, but that means like a total restructuring. You talk about Wilkite? Yeah, Wilkite. But 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 I also want to pull back, like for example, under Ras Wube, who's the last quote unquote duke or warlord before Emperor Teodros leveled the playing field and took over. He uh, there was a different family with Ras Ali and his mother, uh, I believe it was uh, Mintuab. They were running Bagemdar, which is Gondar proper. And Ras Wube or Dajaz, uh, Dajaz Mach Wube had different titles at different times. He was from Simen, from Welkait, and he had conquered Tigray. So Tigray was underneath it, and they were together as an entity separate from Gwandar proper 
but not being run from Makali, be, being run from Walqait. From mm, so this, Dubai. This, yeah, yeah. There's different histories that have shifted around. So I'm actually open-minded to that. But I love a point that you said earlier, and which is why, you know, I have a thought of going back home. It's like, as long as I live in the diaspora, you know, my voice is 10 times less important. It doesn't have zero relevance, but it's 10 yeah, times less important. It's time zero. People living there. You, you know, when you do something time zero, <laughs> zero. You know what zero. I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's like, uh, I just really feel that way. I feel like, you know, what we can do, we can impact things back home. We can, um, like, but so, so it, here's my thing, like, you could do things for the welfare of people and stuff like that back home for sure. But like, my, what I, what, what I would want, like, I don't even have a want, but that's just because I've already, I live in this mind state that I have, right? So I don't have a want about what I want to see back home because it's irrelevant. Like, I, I, I haven't even got to the stage of having a want my want is like peace. You feel what yeah, I'm saying? Peace, rule of law, you know, basic things. Integrity basic of the nation shit. state. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like that's that's where I'm at. You know, um, what how the borders get drawn, who's doing what, what languages they decide to speak. That's all for the people of Ethiopia to decide. What are we talking about? Like what are mm -hmm. who are we to be like, nah, this is uh this and this is that. Like Okay, my grandmama lived there. Bet so your grandmama got an opinion. You feel what I'm saying? Like, like either you better chain migration her ass here, or you better like you know uh, let her acknowledge whatever her decision is gonna be. But like us, us trying to um, all we do is add fuel to this fire. That's all we could do. Like all we do is add more fuel, more fuel to. Uh, already like tumultuous situation. That's 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 really how I feel from the perspective of like, you know, um, like, you know, I I can see because my interest is peace, right? So I'll give you an example. I look, I like, I'll tell you, I'm gonna just visually or like give you use your imagination to kind of piece together this map here, and it's a lot like the pre ninety one map, to be quite honest. So I'll use that as a reference, but you know, the pre-91 map, you got Tigray, Afar, uh, yeah, Tigray, Afar, um, you've got Gondar, you got Gojam, you got Wadlo, you got Shawa, um, you have Gambela, right? So on the west, and then you have coming across the bottom is like Kafa, Sadama, uh Bale. Uh, yeah, you see you feel what I'm saying? So what they've done on this newer map is basically all that bottom, all the uh, southern the southwest through the south, like they've redivided all that up to where and then like Aromia starts like eastern Aromia exists and it and it ends at like Shoa, basically. You feel what I'm saying? And then like that's Aromia to the east and then to the north of Aromia is um like how you know harare or versus somalia same same land different name um no it's somalia and then uh harare is not like a city it's like its own um province as well um now i ain't gonna lie Tigra is like small in this ordeal on this map because afar is still huge afar is huge um it stretches down and it connects with one low Right, so uh, the all three of the more powerful regions in this whole ordeal all get shrunk. I don't mean I get shrunk. I'm how I get shrunk, and till I get shrunk, because one guy becomes its own region, so that takes out north north uh, Amhara region, and then Matakal or uh, yeah Matakal and Beni Shangul are there, so that takes out western Gojam. And so now you've got whatever's left, that's the Amara region. You feel what I'm saying? And, and Wolo's out, right? So that takes out Eastern, East Amara region. So like whatever's left, that's Amara region. It does go to Sudan, but it ends at Wolo to the east. And it, wins at, it ends at Matakal and Beni Shangol to the southwest, you know? And it ends at Shoa to like the true, like to the southeast. So 
And then in the south, in the southwest, it's like Gemma and all that. Like they just chop up the Aroma region to like, and and the southern region into you know whatever would be most appropriate. I'm not as uh, knowledgeable about all those different uh, regions and groups over there, but all of it gets chopped down basically. And I think like federalism and the idea of federalism is giving more control to smaller groups. And then they all contribute to the bigger group, right? Like America, we got 50, 50 states. So mm-hmm. I'm saying it's not like, you know, it's not like we, you know, so that's, in my opinion, we Ethiopia might benefit from chopping up even more. You feel what I'm saying? Like, sure, people are going to have common language and all that. And sure, they should. You know what I'm saying? That's great. I feel like Ethiopia is such a beautiful country. I mean, if I'm part of the education, like, let me talk to a bond and that guy, man. Like, everybody should be knowing three languages, right, in Ethiopia, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? You should know, you know, your, whatever your, the language of that land, you should have to pick another language in Ethiopia. And then you got to, and, and if they're smart, they pick, make sure they got, they know one Farangi language, too. You know what I'm saying? Good. So it's like that yeah. way. Good. Well, good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to call that Farangi language. But, you know, like, I think it makes sense. Yeah. So, you know, like, just like we learn a foreign language here, like, I'm Ethiopia, a foreign language. So it's like you got to learn two languages, two Ethiopian languages and one foreign language. You feel me? And, like, Ethiopia... Ethiopia can do like Ethiopians, man. We the origins, like we we could the 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 people of Ethiopia have so much heart, right? Like, um, like I almost moved back there when I left LA. I went to Ethiopia, and I was there for six months, and I only came back because I had debt obligations, and like I'm not the type of person to just like say screw it like that. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, yeah, so I booty too. I was I was watching them stories. It was beautiful. Yeah, man. Yeah, Be, you know. And shout out to um, shout out to my boy Yona and Alex. They just got married. It was we were out there doing a um, Yona is uh, um, uh, he his family owns Karitsu, right? And so um, we were there because they they were they were like building a resort out, and so we were doing like a like kind of like a site survey sort of thing and uh it was out on the island, the president's island which is off the coast of Djibouti so it was it was a beautiful thing so uh shout out to them because like there's they're just an, they're a great example of the fact that there's so much opportunity back home obviously like opportunity is a relative term right but for us because of the privilege that we do come from right we have to acknowledge that like the best thing we could do for our people is to run up a bag here, fill up a way, fig, figure out a way to do well for ourselves so that we can take either the knowledge or the resources or ideally both and go take it back, back home and like reverse the brain drain. Like we can all be yes. po- a positive influence on Ethiopia. And this is all sides, all ethnicities. Like this is really our duty. This is where we're failing Ethiopia, right? It's because now we getting caught up in, the battles of our parents' generation. We didn't, did, we just like, we just, we letting them old motherfuckers, as a matter of fact, bring us back into the shit. You feel what I'm saying? And um, it's just, it's just kind of crazy to see because like, that's not what we should be doing. You know what I'm saying? Like we need to be letting that shit die off with them, you know, and, and helping build a renewed Ethiopia. 80% of the population in Ethiopia is younger than us. You know what I'm saying? Like, the majority of that generation, or the majority of that, um, of that nation, don't just, like, they don't, they don't know Ethiopia as we know Ethiopia, because how we know Ethiopia is from our parents. Right? Like, or, or you, in your case, you're very well read, so you know Ethiopia, and, a, and probably a way better uh context or may way better uh to a way better extent than how other people know Ethiopia. Um but most of our generation knows Ethiopia vis a vis what their parents have told them about Ethiopia or what their local community relays in regards to culture and customs. You feel me? And um I just feel like that's like we we really fucking up in that regard. There are a lot of dope people, um people who I who um I've been talking to even as, as recent as today who are doing great stuff in Ethiopia, you know, helping take resources back and stuff like that. 
but uh, not but and on top of that I just feel like all of us could be contributing greater to that society by having like by wanting peace by like there's no reason in my opinion I'm sorry this is obviously me taking a side I know I've been talking your ear off bro but I've been had this shit like <laughs> bro bro like for over a year I've had this pent up bro because again man like I feel crazy that it's like people who I consider family that I can't talk to no more. Or like people who I thought were my friends who like I know talk shit behind my back. You feel me? Like I got to confirm. You feel me? Because like motherfuckers still report to me too. You feel me? Like, like, and it's just like, I don't get it because I don't understand the, the idea of maintaining a particular order being worth having millions of your own people die like i don't understand that like so for me it's a religious firm oh, and you're not a part of that religion that's what it is you know they replaced it what's the saddest crazy thing is that's the demographic in ethiopia that has the highest orthodox christian population but you know a lot of the leadership have these beautiful orthodox christian names but uh you know they had a moment where they saw the tensions like you said you had tensions in your own life but you ultimately you know you choose god a lot of these I mean, dudes do not they don't you know what i mean like one of the well yeah i mean about that guy, if you, you hear some of the things he said about the orthodox church you see the no, what he said. Left, uh, he's he, he wants to root it out you know Ro roman i think Petroska is this is uh book uh yabarmud uh uh, I always mess up the name in Amharic. It's like the the powder barrel. He's got this book that mm. they translated. Uh, I think he about would better me. Oh, I, I have heard better. this. Uh, you know, I've heard shit where they say like basically they feel like the to like they trying to rip out like not just like there's a correlation with the uh, uh, the the soul of Ethiopia or I, I mean I say it like that because that sounds biased. Um, no, nope, that's like what. That's it. Like, like being being the the church, and then they make a correlation with the Orthodox Church and Amhara. Yes. Um, which is kind of crazy to me because, like, like you said, like the Tigray region, uh, like the Amhara region, technically is super like mixed up. There's a lot of people who practice Islam and that are you know in Wallo especially. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Um, and like the greater Amara region, not to say, of course, there's majority um, uh, Orthodox uh, Christians, but you but know, the it's, there's more schools are predominantly in the Amhara region. Even the famous the traditional school, what the traditional school it's called Abinet, yeah. where they're called mm -hmm. the Masikarbet, the certification mm -hmm. houses, like the Ethiopian indigenous universities. The majority mm -hmm. of them are in Amhara region. The one that is in Tigray is Debrabai, it's on the Tekaze River which is on the border of Amhara. So right. like the house of Giz poetry, of Kini, the house of uh, scripture study. You know what I mean? Mm. It's in Gondar and in Gwajam. The Kini is in Gwajam and in Wallo. Um, the the Akwakwam, the singing, the Dikwa, that's all in Gondar. It's in North mm. Gondar and South Gondar, like Gondar City and South Gondar. Like most of the education is there. So mm. you're right. I mean, especially when we dig into the past tigray has a very 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 legitimate claim to the orthodox faith but its leaders of that 1991 to 2018 period they were still irreligious they still held some sort of marxism you know that's what i say the whole their their manifesto original manifesto right it's it's uh it's based in marxist leninist uh, beliefs and they literally Name the Amhara people as they like enemies, like mortal enemies. Like, what the fuck are we talking about? They you know infiltrated Wadaba, the monastery, and I'll, other places. I'm sorry if you don't have cursing on your podcast. No, you we know. have it. It's open, baby. It's open. I'm not okay. You know, I didn't even. I ain't even bothered to ask. I've just been over here cursing yeah. like a sailor. No, you go know, ahead. I, I, I know the clergy. Sailors. The clergy <laughs> mad at me, man. I know, but you know. <laughs> Let, no, let, but honestly, this is the this is the cut for truth that you're giving up. Okay, yeah, you know, straight cut for straight today. You feel me? I don't even know. I don't do the love love. You feel me? <laughs> but um, no. So okay, I know this is it's funny. We went off on a crazy tangent, but 
the whole reason why I brought up this whole history was to get to the point of where we are today, which um, obviously I diverted from. But my point is that at the end of the day, I'll be coming into power and then him and the strategic maneuvering, maneuvering that he was doing to kind of get himself out of the grasp of the TPLF while trying to broker peace with them, while also chopping away at their 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 stronghold of like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, so them on their end, they're feeling threatened. Well, guess what? This is where it all boils down to. It's so funny because it all boils down to this, right? I don't know how far along we are into this thing, but it all comes down right here. Abi is an individual. The entire system was all a part of playing chess against CPLF. You understand? Like it's not just Abi. Abi was the leader. He is he is both the head lion and the sacrificial lamb. You feel what I'm saying? Like at the end of the day, like if anything is to go down or go wrong, it's him who's out of there, right? But at the same time, if anything is to go wrong or go right, they might crown this motherfucker. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like. And I'm with that too. But you know what I'm saying? Like to your point yeah. earlier, they viewed him yeah. as the moderate. If anybody's watched the show The Young Pope on HBO, the same thing. Yeah. They choose this young pope because they're different factions within the papacy and the mm -hmm. bishops and the cardinals. And they chose this one dude because they thought that he would be the one who's younger and who could they can control and who's a moderate. And that's exactly well, the way you described it. Yeah. He's he and all the things that they are trying to avoid, he's also not, right? Like there is debate about him being Amara, Romo and all that, I'm not talking about all that. Is the the the, the he's labeled a Romo, okay? Right? Which is to quell the rebellion, Kero and all that. Let's calm that down. We need an Oromo, but we don't want Lemma. You feel what I'm saying? All right. So he, he checks that box, Oromo. T P L F baby. Right, grew up. I mean, EPRDF baby, EPLF baby, grows up through the system, through the military, through the um, uh, security uh, division. You know what I'm saying? Cybersecurity and all that. Through Parliament, he he part he one of them. All right. Um, you you say a, a moderate. I also non orthodox. You feel what I'm saying? This is important, right? Like you said, part of their belief system was chopping away at the fabrics of Ethiopia, non Amhara, right? So at this point, he's checking all these boxes for them, and he comes in, speaks their language, doing their thing, but he has his own philosophy. He thought that shit was going to work. Let's, 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 let's call it space to space. Because honestly, if TPLF and them niggas was, was, was sane, it would have worked. If they were sane, it would have worked. He's basically saying, yo, I got about 100 million motherfuckers who want y'all dead. But I'm willing to get, let y'all go retire. You can have all your shit. You know what I'm saying? Just, just remove yourself from this situation. You know what I'm saying? Or, matter of fact, come join the prosperity party. You feel me? And we could get rid of all this ethnic shit, and we can all prosper together, you know? Like, like, like Mangistu. Nah. Mangistu did it outside the country. He was letting them do it within the country. Within the country. All this shit you stole, just you can keep it here. You know what I'm saying? Which is smarter, because Mangistu took the money with him. People don't know. That man got the bag, and he took it all with him. You feel what I'm saying? But we're not going to talk about Mangistu right now. It's a different topic. Um, yeah, like it was the ultimate, like, you know, golden parachute. Look, y'all done did all this shit, and I ain't even gonna run a coup and let my fucking ghetto niggas come run up in here and kill you. Because that's what they want to do. You know what I'm saying? Or send them up north and create a bloodbath. Because that's what they want to do. You know what I'm saying? What we're going to do is we're going to let you go, and then you're going to let us run this shit. And you can even join us. We're creating a uni unified party. And we're going to let these other motherfuckers create unified parties. And uh, we're going to get about this ethnic federalism hellhole that we've been in. Even though he always claims we're not getting out of ethnic federalism. 
I'll be a politician, so you know he got a lot. That's just part of the thing. That's another thing that blows my mind. Like, there's atrocities in war. No shit. Oh, a politician lied. No shit. They're synonymous. These things go together. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you believe everything a politician say at this point, that's your fault. I learned that shit from Obama. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like that nigga Obama broke my heart, but he made me, he made me, like, rock solid at the same yes, time. Yes, we to can. Them. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hope and change and all that shit. Like, bro, you bombed. He, that nigga killed it. Not, all right, bro, I'm not going to go off on that tangent. My point is, is um, they had the opportunity to, one, just do their thing and just be out. Like, just take the L. It's not even an L. It's like the most bomb 401k package ever. You work for 30 years, 27 years. You work, shit, 40 more if you want to count the actual rebellion, right? You've been working for 30, 40 years. You old than a motherfucker. You done looted the country for what it has. So here, just take it. We're going to start over. I'm going to holler at my boys up in Dubai. They're going to cut me a check. We're going to just reset this whole thing. You feel me? It's the illustration model that they followed from World War One, World War Two. It's the the de uh kaiserification the 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 world war one germans the nazis even mm. and the demarxification in the former soviet places a lot of those people for a long time i think some of them even to this day collect checks from the government so that they don't work like they just retire exactly what you said a 401k plan to not mm. be involved to just retire yeah just hey man just keep your ass over there just go live your life right this is the offer. Um, this is the offer that they received. Naturally, they turned it down. Okay, great. So you are gonna stay the TPLF first to Prosperity Party? Good luck with that. I mean, you may get your region, but you ain't gonna get nothing else, you know. And then they just packed up their shit and left Parliament. It was like, no, nah, we're just going to our region. So you're giving up, and this gets into this whole gaslighting shit they've been doing for the last year. You're giving up your voice in the federal government. Like, you are making the decision to do that. You have, what is it, 50-some parliamentary seats. You have a voice, 30, 30, somewhere between 37 and 50 some. I don't know, whatever 6-7% gets you, right? <laughs> you have, <laughs> you have all these seats in parliament, and you giving them up because you don't want to fuck with them, right? The other part, again, how do we get here? I'm not even going to talk about all the different steps I'll be getting on there and the, uh, changing the currencies. No, I'll be playing chess. I don't people think people really get that shit. I've been playing chess since, you know what I'm saying, before people even knew who the fuck he was, right? But um, then uh, they, I, I'll be in the establishment, a parliament really pushes back the election and they say COVID. Really, don't matter what they say. They they have they found their own little ways within the law to postpone the election, and they decide that uh, they, being the TPLF, decide no, we are gonna hold an election. This one, this one, I'd be like, what the fuck are y'all doing? Why, why be so extra by not having an election or postponing the election? It doesn't like it doesn't mean it's not as if that takes away your power. You you're still the power of Tigray, right? So holding the extra election is not necessary for you, especially because you're not. It's not as if you are some. Um, you're the incumbent, right? So it's like you're keeping your position even by postponing the election. Either way, you're still the leaders of Tigray. So it is only for the purposes of of antagonizing the central government that you would hold another election there is no actual purpose to it it's not if they were if there was some alternative party within Tigray that did what they did that would make more sense he's like nah man i'll be in them trying to keep tplf in power because that's what pausing the election would do and legit like re in reality tplf was in power up until 2020 so if they say we're not having an election until 2021 that leaves tplf in power still right just like PP was still in power of the federal government until they had the elections later, right? So anyway, this is why this whole thing doesn't make sense to me and why even though once the war starts, it's a shithole and everybody's going to commit atrocities and all of that is, is cancels each other out at that point, right? In my opinion. Um, 
you have to get to how did this shit start and why are we here? Because that's who, that's that's the only that's like that's where you can assign blame, and then the rest that comes thereafter, you can't blame somebody else. You can't gaslight the people of Ethiopia. You can't gaslight the people of the world. Well, maybe you can misinform them enough to where they don't even feel like they're being gaslit. But you can't gaslight the diaspora into believing like, oh, you know, this group that is completely behind because there's another thing, maybe controversial, but the contributors to this war are not just the uh, soldiers that are wearing, you know, uniforms, right? The uniforms, right? There are the guerrilla fighters. There are the people that are hiding people into, you know, there's all the work that they're doing and all the fact. There's so much shit that they're doing within the region to contribute to this war that, um, Digital campaigns, the digital way, Yanni. I mean, I, I'm talking, I, I ain't even getting on that shit. I'm talking about the literal, physical, con- 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 you know, mm-hmm. the trucks, for example, like yeah. shit on the ground. Like, how are these motherfuckers getting fed? How are these motherfuckers, what, where are they getting this fuel? You feel what I'm saying? Like, yeah. all of that is people, right? So, all these people are either volunteering or they're being coerced. I mean, naturally, it's one or the other. So you're either willing, willfully going to war against your country or you're being coerced, right? Either way, you're involved, right? And then you have the, the, the head government, the head, like the, the people at the top, where in reality, there's no way that they're going to get their way because the only way for them to get their way is for the, for the nut church to come save them. Mm-hmm. Which they've explicitly called for They're foreign intervention, UN intervention. Shout out to China and India and Russia who ain't having it. Not only China, India, and Russia ain't having it. People mad at Avi now because they feel like he he. I, man, Ethiopians, we fucking dramatic. Okay, this motherfucker Avi again is a politician, right? And I say motherfucker with all due respect because I'm born <laughs> and raised in America especially in the South and everything is a motherfucker, okay? But, you know, I'm actually, like, mark my words, I'm end up meeting, meeting the good doctor soon. But, um... Yeah, people, you know, people from Ethiopia should understand if they know uh, Addis Ababa Amharic is different from uh, Gondar, Godjam, Wello, Shoa Amharic, and then Dire Dawa. If anybody ever been to Dire Dawa and Harar, which we mentioned Harar earlier, that's the nastiest I'm hard ever, and I got much fam from there, and I know it. You know, they yeah. say like "f your mama" to say hello. You know, oh, okay. uh, even yeah, in exactly. Amharic. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. So it's all love. That's not that. Yeah, exactly. There's no disrespect there uh, when I say that, but um, you know, uh, I don't even know what I don't even remember what I was bringing up, brother, to Abi. But you were just saying that there's politics being played that people don't recognize. Oh, bro, there, like it's there's so many moving parts that at the end of the day, like you can't sit here and try to be tit for tat and say this first that like it, you got to just find things that are clear and objective and say, like, what is what's the goal? How do we get there? What do we need to acknowledge in order to get to the place where we can get to the goal? Right. Like we need. We have to acknowledge that the only way for this shit to get better is for the war to stop. Okay, great. The then it's who's gonna put down the guns first, right? Hey, I'm keeping a buck with you. There's no way as a central government you're gonna have me put down the guns towards a group that just fucking bought, went after my largest military base. Like, what are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? Like, they changed it from politics to war. Like that's that's this is where this this is the whole thing. They like failed they at losing, politics, so they, they went failed to war. at politics, so they went to war. They can't talk about oh it was a preemptive attack, it was a preemptive attack, they were coming for us, blah 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 blah. You failed at politics, so you built up your army, you marched them around for the last three fucking years, four years now, right? Parading 
getting all people start hyped up, telling them the, the, the big bad Amaras are coming, the central government's coming, blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? Getting they people, said, Nay Bahalawi Sawata in Tigrinya. They said, This is our cultural game. Yeah, all that shit. And here's the other thing, bro. Why are we here? I think, and I use the term gaslighting in this case, people p- people actually don't understand the real definition of gaslighting. Gaslighting is essentially when you're trying to convince someone that they're wrong when you know that they're not wrong. And you're actually fucking making them lose their mind because, uh, you know, you're getting them to truly believe what they believe, like, truly change what they believe, and they're actually right. So it's a super... A manipulative thing. Gaslighting is not just like, oh, uh, like to throw gas on a fire. It's not gaslighting. It's it's a manipulation tactic that is intended on fucking with someone's mind to basically get them to not have a belief in what they know to be true, right? So the the, the TPLF manifesto already explicitly states who they believe their enemies are. And what they're willing to do in order to, you know, what they find to be success, which is creating their own state, right? Um, and they always use this term, Amhara expansionist. And I find this to be so ironic because the region that expanded was their own. They're, they expanded, they're the ones expanding to or attempted to annex, or they did annex Western Tigray. They annexed parts of Wollo, calling it Southern Tigray, right? Like they moved and expanded to f- more fertile lands because with Tigray troops, in itself, with guns, expansionist, right? And then as this war progressed, they literally do it again. You feel what I'm saying? Like, as they're calling the Amharas, the Amhara expansionists, they are pushing uh, their troops out deep into the Amhara region. And Afar. What? And Afar. Oh, yes. Let's. How to, the Afars, let me tell you, the Afars, they, they handled up, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're, they, they're my favorite. You know, the Desert Lions. Shout out to the Desert bro, Lions. The Desert Lions. You know what the coldest shit was when they had that damn uh, Black Panther inauguration? You know, they might as well should have been up there like this, the way they had, uh, well, I'll be having everybody, I can't believe that shit. But anyway, when the iPhones came out and they was like, damn, you're jigging with the guns, you know what I'm saying? I thought that was the coldest shit. You know, Bro, the Afad and like, Djibouti were dancing even to celebrating, which is crazy. Yo, yo, like, I, you know, the Afad is, like, and, and that's the thing, it's like, they held it down because, you know, that's that's the road to Djibouti, you know what I'm saying? That's, there's bases out, out east, so it's like, you know, yes, but truth to, truth to the point, they go up pushing out of, uh, you know, Bali, and they're, now they're expanding irony they're um pushing on their culture how does six to seven percent of the country have such a a high level of influence on every fucking thing in the country you know what i'm saying um and it's not to say like uh, you know like there's a problem with the sharing of cultures but how can you they literally took on all that they were uh, projecting the amhara people and ethnicity to be or to be doing or whatever, and they took that on as themselves for for thirty fucking years. You know what I'm saying? And then have this weird um, complex where they somehow feel like that's what's happening to them. And I'm and I and I for the life of me can't understand it, right? Like because if you want to try to say historically this that and the other was happening whatever like i'm not even going to get into that like that that's this, this is an argument that can be had i know you in that bag i'm not even getting into that but to be doing the same thing that you were that you're accusing other people of doing currently and for the last few decades uh and then to then purport yourself as a fucking victim I don't understand this shit whatsoever. And I, and I damn sure don't understand how the rest of the world don't see it for what it is. 
You know what I'm saying? And what's worse is like, I know good hearted people who got family in Tugai who ain't even like looking at it that way because they are being gaslit. Like it's their own people are being gaslit. It's their, it's their own people back home who are suffering from Stockholm syndrome. It's 6 million people. Actually, I don't even know how many people it is now. Cause after this war, they've already said they're willing to risk 2 million people. They will not genocide their own people. Hear that. They said we'll risk, it's 2 million Tigrayan so- soldiers who are mostly youth, their, their next generation have to die that they're willing to take that on in order for Tigray to prevail, which I don't even understand what the fuck Tigray prevailing, like what does that entail? What What is Tigray prevailing? Is it being part of Ethiopia? Because it already is that. So like, is it its own nation state? Because now we're talking about taking parts of the country away, like what? And they still haven't said that. They haven't said that shit since 70 fucking four. They really don't even really know. They haven't stuck on the same plan for what Tigray is supposed to be since the U.S. was like, uh, you're talking about creating your own country. We just had this with Eritrea. It's probably not going to work. How about y'all just run this shit and we back you? And they were like, okay, we'll adjust the manifesto. You know what I'm saying? Like, they've never had a consistent goal as to what are we trying to do. And so it's like, we'll just take whatever the best offer is right now. You know what I'm saying? We want to be our own state. Oh, America? Wait, we can run all of the country? Oh, we'll do that. And they're like, oh, we can't run the country no more? Uh, We want to just go be our own state again. It's like, yo, like, bro, just fucking... The, it's millions of y'all and it's dozens of people who are really causing all the problems. It's very simple. Them dozens need to just hand themselves over and let the millions be okay. And we, the people can figure it out. You feel me? Like, that's that's really the, the, the point. And that's why, why I put that poll up. It's because, or I even, like, I, I put my perspective up first because I saw the tweet that they tweeted about is like 96 people who have a warrant out. And now some of them people that have already been locked up and released, like Shabbat Nega. Some of them are dead. A lot of them are dead already. So it's really not 96 people. I just didn't have the time to fucking go look up all 96 of them and cross out who uh, doesn't qualify and then put the accurate number. So I'm saying 96 because mm-hmm. all of them on the list is yeah. were all... Probably less than or equal there, right? to yeah less than or equal to right um i love that i'm a math guy so you just spoke my language um uh but you know the point is is like if if those few people didn't see themselves as above the millions of people who are sacrificed who are who they are sacrificed like let's call it space to space they are sacrificing their own people for nothing Including children, which uh, the New York Times has played with words as they often do in euphemisms to try to hide. But uh, yeah, and and you know what? I like hey, it. Let's what? let's let's uh let's aim to to wrap it up. You and I agree, and 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 this is where we agree is like end the war by having these elites who were involved with the former regime turn themselves in surrender. And let's figure something out. I've even thrown up like what you said, like the extensions of like giving them retirement money. I still throw that idea around because it doesn't make sense to me to just put people in like camps or or whatever going forward. If there's any a last thought that I want to get from you is so many people ask in my comments and elsewhere. I keep the comments on. I regulate them, but I keep them on. Uh, what I want is Ethiopian Americans, Ethiopians and other uh, diaspora, English speaking, whatever, you know, Oceania, Australia, New Zealand, the UK, Canada, whatever it may be. But also I want you to speak to the non-Ethiopians because I have a lot mm. of those in my audience. They always oh, ask me, what is it that I can do? Like, do you just tell them to shut up and read or like what, what genuine no. advice, like what is it in this time? What is it that, if there's if it's the same thing, it's the same thing. But if there's any difference between like Ethiopians in the diaspora and the children of them, you know, to live Ethiopia versus just like, you know, random Europeans, Americans who are interested in the conflict and realize there's something missing with the narrative of a lot of the corporate media, but they don't know quite like like, okay, well, well you told me this information. What do I do? Like, what would you say to them? And then while you're doing that, 
we're gonna talk about your creative stuff next time we get you back on the program. But if there's yeah, anything bro, you're my plugging, bad. I mean to talk your ear off, bro. It's no, no, no. Like, this is this so. is a, politics is one of my favorite subjects, and we we got caught up on it. And you you're informed on this. You know, you try to be modest about it, but you're way more informed than the average Ethiopian American I come across. You know, it's just like I've been in the trenches relative. To, I guess I shouldn't use that uh, saying when we're actually talking about war. But I've been in the mix with um, a lot of, like, the next generation of, like, the former political elite. You know what I'm saying? And and I've also uh, grew up very entrenched in the community here. So I have a, a, a really um, interesting perspective. I feel like because um, I've worked with so many different sides, right? ESFNA versus, you know, with the kid, the children of TPLF, you know what I'm saying? To, you know, even now it's like, I know I have close ties with people in the current uh, administration. So it's just like, you know, and my thing is, is um, one, actually, before I get into all that, I just want to thank you for having me on. I want to make sure I say that. Um, I really do appreciate it. And uh, next time I'll, I got to, I'm in the comfort of my home and I'm looking at you like it's FaceTime. So really it's like, I'm talking to you like, as if, you know, it's just It's me. real. That's you, you what I me? want. That's the vibe that I want. Yeah, yeah, you feel me? So, like, um... We kept it real, real for them. Yeah. I hope you yeah, don't regret yeah. that. Like, that's... I, I don't feel well, any type I actually, of way I from feel me. Like, I feel like I, I personally needed this because, like, you know, I need people to understand that, like, I'm not coming from some... Like, my belief is truly that, like, the people of Ethiopia, like, the people of Ethiopia within Ethiopia... Uh, which which it, this actually comes to answer your question. Uh, that's who matters. That's what matters relative to like this war and everything. Like uh, all this claiming and shit we doing over here, unless we are moving over there or we're like somehow investing in the development and infrastructure of Ethiopia, it's like, yo, just honestly cool that shit. Just call for peace. Like you over here rah rah about particular sides and all that other dumb ass shit. That shit makes no sense, right? Um, for the people who maybe not um, Abisha or not even like uh, necessarily consider themselves, you know, one generation away, diaspora, child of immigrants or immigrants themselves, like, you know, for our American um, uh, brothers and sisters, I would say um, go back, right? Um, even, even obviously it's different as an Ethiopian going to Ethiopia, um, right? But I still feel like no matter what country you go to as a, cause I felt even kind of the same way in Djibouti in a way is like um, being in a space where, where you look around and you wake up and everywhere you go and everywhere you look is people. It, it went away a little bit. I can still hear you, but it's much softer than before. It's not like before. It's not like before. I I can hear you. It's just like 10 times softer. All right. How about now? Perfect. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just be loud. So um, my, my, my point is, is that I would say... Don't to be biased towards Ethiopia, um, but go back home and realize the the realization that I made the first trip I went to Ethiopia, and especially the trip 2018 where I almost stayed, is that you have options. You don't have to live in America, right? That's and right. There's actually more opportunity relative exponential growth um, in a space that really is about to go through a whole industrial revolution. So it's like imagine being around and having the knowledge during Rockefeller's time. And you know what I'm saying? Like, or during just like, we all could be doing a lot more and a lot better. 
to put a tremendous effort into the building Africa up because Africa means it's up to for all black people. Right? Um, well, that's part of why we find ourselves in the predicament that we do uh, relative to the rest of the world, relative to power, uh, is because our root is is not like our foundation isn't strong. You know what I'm saying? So that would be the one thing that I would say is, um, uh, like Beyonce said, find your way back. You feel me? Like get get out there and see. Um, even if it's just for a visit, right? Let me see if I get way better way better okay so find find your way back would be uh my uh my recommendation or would be what i what i ask or or what i would say to anyone and, and, and to that extent i have um things that i like to help contribute to putting together uh with my boy nate uh, with my cousin out in ethiopia um, shout out to Nate. Uh, we do a diaspora homecoming uh, program. Um, the last time I was out there was in January. We brought everyday people out to Ethiopia, and it was one of the latest, if not the latest, events that uh, I've ever thrown in my life. And I've thrown a lot of a lot of shit, um, uh, or been a part of throwing, I should say. Um, but uh, you know, all oh, that's debate. The partying and the fun. I, I, I speak. I'm very candid about it. That's the bait. That's the bait to get us to go out there and realize we can still have fun and live like mm -hmm. whatever, you know what I'm saying, out there. The truth of it is like what we really need to be doing is finding a way to take advantage of the resource that we have here, the privilege that we have here, whether it's working for however long we need to work, getting some sorts of residual income, whether it's real estate or something else, um, and then living out there and providing and taking a lump sum, ideally of cash with you, and building something out there and contributing to the economy, creating jobs, um, whatever, by, by any means, like that's what we could do. Like we've sent billions of dollars over the last year back home in remittance, right? And it's like, we could be doing that and creating as opposed to just like uh, doing it in the, for the purposes of welfare, doing it for the purposes of investment, right? Um, so this, this would be, uh, um, where where my suggestion is um and to anybody who uh may see this or chop this up send it to your friend whatever the fuck uh i love everybody that i'm around right whether i agree with you or not like um i believe that like at least for me personally in a one-on-one -on -one intimate situation i try my best to be a safe space for anybody whether I agree with you or not. Now, I may challenge you or challenge your thoughts, challenge your ideas, challenge you to see things from another perspective, but I won't judge you, right? And I feel like if we uh, all had that approach as opposed to leading with our hurt and actually leading with, like, love and grace and mercy and forgiveness and all these things, then, which is, like, it's like the, this is like how this is what it means to be Ethiopian too. Like you, you'd be surprised the power of your kusta back home. You feel what I'm saying? Like the power of like humility, right? You know how many fights I was about to be in in the club because like, bro, like motherfuckers move away that we don't move down here, and I'm ready to draw somebody, and then I'm just like, you know what? Like come here, bro, and I just give somebody a hug, like bro, chill out, bro. Like we good, and they're like, wait, one the man, I don't know. What I'm saying. Like it's different. Like at the end of the day, like, like. Our nature is not to be like that towards each other. We just got way too much pride, way too much ego about us, which is why we fight against other people so viciously and we willing to die over the next, our neighbor, we willing to go get shot and all that because it's all part of the same um, complex. And if we just find a way to take the love from that and, 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 and apply that pride to our collectiveness, as opposed to our individualness, which is the problem in America, or our ethnicity, which is the problem in Ethiopia, um, you know, um, we could go a long way, man. So I'm off my soapbox. I'm off my left of my uh, lecture. This is however many years long of of Gadasse that I haven't participated in. This is I just put it all, all of that 
the whole of Germany and the whole of Germany <laughs> stood off. Okay, you know what I'm saying? That's where we are right now, bro. But I'm not a good at letting the artist learn the reaction. So, like, I better thank you for uh, reaching yeah, for uh, answering my I'm call man. and pulling up on me yeah. digitally. Yeah, for sure, bro. Thank you for having me. Thank you, bro.